What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. I'll be your host, and Rob will be your other host. Two hosts, one review. Wow. What? I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad, man. Way to go. That's why I'm here. That's why I let you join me, because I'm like, you know what? He really wants to. Rob needs friends, and like, yes. I want to I help be his friend. I want to give him something to do during the day. Yes. Because people the, like Rob the, the night. should really feel like they're... A part of productive members of society. Right. We are doing part two of this Theros Beyond Death set review. And we got a Crowan War is the first red card. Gain control of target creature for as long as the Crowan War remains on the battlefield. So you gain it on turn four, and you keep it, and you keep it, and it's gone, and you lose it. Until your next turn, creatures your opponent's control attack each combat if able, so you can steal their guy and then block their guy that attack, that attacks you with their guy. Mm. Each tapped creature does damage to itself equal to its power, and then you kill all their creatures. It's yeah, if they attack. Well, they have to. Until your next turn, creatures your opponent's control attack each combat if able, so they have to attack you. Yeah, you're right. That's literally the whole point of the card. Yeah. I think this is good. You think it's good? Is it not good? This card's great. Okay, so I'm right. I don't know what your problem For once. is. You son of a bitch! Got him. He didn't get. Sh you didn't get nothing. I got you. Dang, he did get me. I'm I got. I. I. I completely messed with you. With my words. He did. And the kiss on your shoulder. Got him. He that time he got me. Woo! But, but he got me without getting you. Oh, no, you did. No, you. No, you got me. Oh, okay. Why are you like this? The kiss was right here the whole time. But the kiss was here the whole time, you see. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go. Next line is right. Bruce line left. Okay. Bam. Okay. Anax, hardened in the forge. Why is this guy's eyes red? He's busted. Mm. He's a demigod. He's so good. Look at that kiss. Look at that floating kiss. He's so good. He, yeah. His power is equal to your devotion to red. So, again, a 2 3 base. Whenever an axe or another non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one red satyr creature token. Or an axe or another non-token creature. So if this guy dies, you make a 1-1. One, one. If any creature dies, you make a 1-1. One, one. If you With, have two of these... I'm, I'm not even done reading it. Let me, let me finish reading it, and then sorry. you can tell us the, the, the benefits of it. This creature can't block. If the creature had power four or greater, create two of those tokens. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. If you have two of these and they wipe the board, you get four guys. That's what you're going to say? Well, you can't have two on the board at the same time because they're legendary. Right, so... But if you cast a second one, you automatically get four 1-1s. One That's really good. It's pretty good, yeah. It's really good. He's right. That's pretty good. It it actually is good to cast a second one. I like that it's uh, a demigod. Look yeah, what's, what's happening here. All right, so next, Arena Trickster. Four mana for a 3-3 three, three whenever you cast your first... As, as soon as I see four mana for a 3-3, three, three, I'm like, you got to be fucking spectacular. It's not. It's not. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. It's not. Josh, you're getting four because when it when it, uh, when it it dies, they see each other on the battlefield. Yeah, and your devotion is, is your four, at four. least. Mm -hmm. So they're both four threes. One of them dies. They both see a four-power creature dying, and then they both yep. put two 1-1s one on the battlefield. Yeah, yep, it's, yep. it's very good. Um. Three mana when Aspect of the Magic Warner's Battlefield Enchanted Creature gets first strike until end of turn. No. Uh -uh. Blood Anti Perspirant. Ooh. Two mana for a 1 1. Whenever you sack a permanent, put a 1 1 counter on it. It's not terrible. Sacrifice a creature or enchantment. It deals one damage to target creature. That creature can't block this turn. Wait, that's actually interesting. I haven't seen this card before. I mean, it could be. It's, it's just another. With Mayhem Devil. I yeah, mean, I know. It's just a Mardu. Yeah, Mayhem and the Cat combo. Like, yeah. this is just another Mardu creature that benefits from this thing, a two drop that you know attacks for four or five like that's real also just sacrificing the cat in order to make something not be able to block is pretty good yeah like this is actually great because with the oven in play it's automatically a three three because you sacrifice a cat and then you sacrifice the food to bring back the cat yeah and it's also whenever you sacrifice a permanent not a creature i'm gonna put this on the list yeah i can't i had never seen this before but i like that card. But now you have i like it thank you careless celebrant two mana for a two one when it dies it deals two damage to an opponent or Planeswalker an opponent control. Sorry, creature or planes. This card's not bad for a T1, for a two. It's not bad. It but trades up. It trades with a three power cre three toughness or four toughness creature. Yeah. It can take out like if you're attacking their planeswalker and they block, you're still if, taking out if their planeswalker. If there's a red deck, I could I could see this being played. And and with Torbran, with Torbran on the field, oh God. it deals four damage. That's yeah, it deals four damage good. on the power and on the It's like a reverse Kavu. I like that. 
Wow, that's actually kind of cool. It hits the two relevant things, planeswalkers and creatures, which is nice. Yes, yeah. Like, being able to choose which one, like, if they have a Tefri and you want to attack it, you're almost assuredly getting through. Even if they block it and this guy dies. Just still dealing damage. Right. Pretty cool. Dream Shaper Shaman. Minotaur Shaman. 5-4 for 6. At the So, like, you know what else costs 6 mana? Inferno Titan. So, you got to... It's, it's a high bar, man. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay 3. Now, I got to pay more mana mm -hmm. and sacrifice a non-land permanent. Now, I got to sack something... Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land permanent card. Put that card onto the battlefield. How do you abuse this? At the beginning of your instep, you may pay three and sack a non-land permanent. The problem is you're going to have to... Like, you can't sacrifice the land, right? So, it's not like a situation where you can just have Dream Shaper Shaman and, like, Emrakul in your deck, right? Because you need other permanents. Oh, you're right. Yep, you're right. So, you can't sack a land. If you could sack a land, you could put, like, four of this card in your and deck. four Emrakul. And four... Yeah, Emrakul. And then you and, just, and then like... spin the wheel. Yeah. But the, but the other thing is you can make tokens, but I mean, it's still like you're paying six mana for this guy and then three more mana. Yeah, it's not good. At the next turn, because like this guy has to survive the turn you play him, and then on the next turn, he have to get to your end step to use the ability. So it's not like you're like doing it during upkeep. Or, or you have to have seven, what, six, nine mana to do it on the seven, same six, turn. Seven, six, nine mana. To do it on the same turn. Eight, six, seven, nine mana. It doesn't give you shit. Dream Stalker Manticore. Three mana for a four, two. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, it deals one damage to any target. There's a real, like, cast a spell on your opponent's turn theme in this set, it seems like. Yeah, because like. it's, it's, um, it's blue-red. It's alliance colors. Uh, the pieces for that for that deck. The, the God, what's the card called? The Enchantment. The, Probable what? Alliance? Yeah. That doesn't care if you do it on their opponent's turn. That's just no, the but, but it No, but... There are cards that, like, the the Hippo, that lets you draw a card when you cast a spell on their turn. Like, there are a lot of cards that synergize with what it's trying to do. Right, but Improbable Alliance doesn't have anything to do with that. No, but I'm saying that that deck, because that deck is based on drawing, like, a second card. Right, which is easier to do on your turn than their turn. Fair. Because they, they, they have a built-in card drawing on your turn. Is that how that works? This card's not good, though, right? Mm -mm. Escape Velocity. One mana, a enchanted creature gets plus one, plus oh, and haste. Shouldn't this be like escape with velocity? No, because escape velocity is a noun. That's an actual thing. Like the escape velocity is how fast you have to be going to break through a, the gravitational pull of something. Holy shit. Is that right? Physics. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, escape velocity is the speed at which the sum of an object's kinetic energy and its gravitational potential is equal to zero. An object which has achieved escape velocity is neither on the surface nor in a closed orbit. I watched Flash. The minimum speed needed for a free, non-propelled object to escape from the gravitational influence of a massive body. Yeah, that's... Look at that old man go. <laughs> 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 he's doing it! He looks like he's been running his whole life. Uh, Fateful <laughs> End, three mana. Uh, Fateful End deals three damage to any target. Scry one. This is not the rate I want for a for no. a three damage spell. I wish it did four. It's any target, which is, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Final flare, three mana as additional cost to cast this spell. Sack a creature and enchantment deals five damage to a creature. No. Flummoxed Cyclops. There's got to be a there's got to be a comment here. You want to say? This is Rob's nickname in college. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> four mana for a four four with reach. That's not me. Whenever two, yeah, Rob's like I didn't have reach. <laughs> I in had college. no reach. I have no reach now. Whenever two or more creatures your opponents control attack, Flummox Cyclops can't block this combat. <laughs> Frank is like, e equals MC squared. Rob is like, I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you're right. Turtles. Uh, whenever two or more creatures, you're going to... Yeah, okay, no, nah, don't care about that. <clears throat> Wait, what? So if your opponent's attack with two guys, this guy's like, nah, I can't do shit about it. Sorry, my dude. <laughs> He's flummoxed. He's furious. Fl like, it's funny because reach is an ability that gives you an extra way to block. Yeah. But then his other ability is like, like, nah, just I'm too tired. JK, JK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But if I attack with two birds, then you can't do shit. He's like, they're attacking. They're attacking. Let's go. There's two of them. Uh, nah, I, I, you I, know I'm what? Out. I just, I'm out. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm out, my dude. <laughs> Furious Rise, three mana. At the beginning of your end step, <laughs> if you control a creature with power four or greater, that's also a theme. These are all ferocious theme in this set, too. Mm. Exile the top card of your library. You may play the card until you exile another card with Furious. Is this card good? You're going to reread it because you weren't even listening? No. It seems a little too... No. A little too finicky. First off, why does it say you may play that card? Because that's what it's allowing you to do. Oh, until you exile another card. Right. So you can't play lands then. 
Yes, because oh, like this cow. costs three. Yeah, it's not bad. Maybe in a red, maybe in a red deck that's trying to beat control decks. The problem is it does nothing if you don't have a creature with power four or greater. Wow, way to read. <laughs> 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 Holy shit! <laughs> Whoa! This is normally an effect you find wow, at four mana. You can read. This that was that was totally like dogging me for the for the escape velocity comment. <laughs> He's like, that's how a bitch maybe looks Actually, stupid. Actually, that's wrong. I you you put that together and I hadn't even thought about that. What, the reading thing? That was just beyond me. Um No, tying this into that other smart thing. Oh, okay. Cause I thought, you know, you're like, nope. no, nah, man, I wasn't even thinking about that. I just wanted to I just wanted to to rip on you. This a was bit. a standalone. Yep. Look how many don't just eat all the nugs, man. I but I like these. Why do you put them in the in the jar? I don't. It's Felipe. Felipe puts it in there. Oh shit. <laughs> Hold on. It's a communal candy bowl, but nonetheless, like don't why would you throw all the trash back? Because I in don't. There? I want him to look at it. Come on, dude. I want him to look at it and be like, "Hey, there's some of don't those do. nugs in there." Because you can see the gold wrappers. He can probably hear you. Oh shit! I didn't need them. There's a candy ball here. Rob just put all his trash in the. He put the trash back in here. I don't know because what's wrong gold. with him. I wanted him to think they're in what's there. What's wrong with him? Anyway, this is a no. This is a fat no. Nah, dog. Hero of the games. Three mana for a 3-2. Whenever you cast a spell that targets him, so he is heroic. You just he don't sucks. want to say it's heroic. Heroes of the Revel. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1. One, one. So it's a it's five five power for five mana. This is great and limited. Whenever you cast a spell that targets it, it does heroic, just like the other guys do heroic. Impending Doom. This guy's got this knife suspended up here, and he's probably doing some magic. Three mana. Look, you're just taking all of them out. What, for the meme? You did that for the meme? You, you made, made me feel bad. Why would you put them in there seriously and just intend to leave them in there? That's Maybe so Maybe I dropped weird. them on accident. I, w I didn't intend to leave them in there. You were going to take them out? Yeah. So I didn't make you feel bad. You were going to do it anyway. I felt bad. Jesus. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three, and attacks each combat if able. When it dies, Impending Doom deals three damage to that creature's controller. No. No. Incendiary <laughs> Oracle. Two mana for a two, two. Uh, if it, it gets plus one plus O oh until end of turn for two mana, if a creature dealt damage by this would die. Excellence. Nothing. There's nothing this does no, appeals to me. Infuriate. We so already got gets it. Plus three plus O oh until end of turn. We already got it. That's already standard. Infuriate. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. That name does not. Is it the same name? Yep. Really. Yep. Am I out of my mind? No, there's not. No, that's I put two U's. Yes, there is. All right. <laughs> Iroa's blessing. Four mana Wait, for an. Go back. Is that the same dude in the picture? It is. Well, they're both minotaurs. I don't know if it's the same dude. It's the same dude. They're without horns. That's that's hornist, my dude. <laughs> okay. Iroa's blessing four mana. Enchant a creature. Enchant creature you control. When it enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to a creature or planeswalker and opponent controlled. And the creature gets plus one plus one. That's not bad. Hmm. It's like four damage for four, like to to a creature or planeswalker. It's if it was three mana, I think it would be all right. If it was three mana, it'd be fucking four be is great. A lot. Galvanic arc was three damage. You know what Galvanic Arc does? No. It does three damage for three mana. Yeah. Galvanic Arc was an enchantment from Ravnica. First strike. Right. But it's but the point is you play it on your own creature to deal three damage to a creature or player. I, know, I was just saying that because I read the card as you're looking know, it up. I know. But my point is that like it's very... I'm, I'm being still being serious and, and still evaluating these no, I know. in the context of a classic Ravnica card. So. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, four, four, like four, four damage for four mana is not unheard of. Like, it's Warlier's Helix. <clears throat> Every Minotaur looks the same to you. That's what I said. <laughs> I know, man. It's terrible. Um, but the problem, like, is you, you can only put it on your creature. One trick with a Galvanic Arc was, like, if you play it on your creature and they respond by killing your creature, then you don't get to deal the damage. So a lot of times, if you were going to kill your opponent's creature with Galvanic Arc, you would put it on their creature and then deal the damage to their creature. So that way they have no way to, to kill the creature in response to the enchantment. Interesting. Um, so that was a, that was an old trick with a Galvanic Arc. But, like, you can't do that with Iroas' Blessing because it doesn't let you. So, I mean, it's great and limited. This is a great card for limited, obviously. Four yeah. damage is a lot of damage. That's a, that's a removal spell and a buff. Irreverent Revelers, three, three mana for a 2-2 two, two destroy an artifact, or it gains haste. This card seems great. Cool card design. I think there's better cards. Shieldbreaker is just better. Oh, you think these are better cards? Wow. Do you think like Jace the Mind Sculptor is a better card? No, cards that do the same thing. Oh, you think Shieldbreaker is better than this? I do, yes. Really? Yeah. Why? Because you could do it on one turn. You could pay one man on turn one, I meant. Like you can turn one and destroy the oven. Because you can destroy the artifact for X. 
or for right but if you're playing a I'm deck that like has no artifacts this guy just gets haste and it has two two toughness right so other, like yeah the other one has three power though that's your trade-off no it doesn't it's a two one and rift shieldbreaker yeah it's i a thought it was one. a three one. Oh no that would be that would be bonkers i could have sworn there it was three. Oh no wait i've played a lot of vintage cube my dude it is a two one which one's which one's a three? There's a th oh Rimrock Knight Shepherd and no, Rimrock. Knight yeah, Rimrock is a three one. That's right. Hmm. Either way, this is just a manic vandal with upside. It's a manic vandal where a you don't have to vandal manically. Oh, actually, you do have to destroy target artifact. It's not a oh no, you don't have to destroy artifact because no, you can you just could, choose other yeah, mana. Yeah. Right. So like manic vandal, you can target. It's not own a stuff. may. Well, it's not a may ability. Mm -hmm. So if you're the only one with an artifact, you, you have, have to destroy to, yeah. it because red is chaotic. Um. But this guy's nice because it's it's just it's almost like I want to say a, I'm I'm reluctant to use the term because it's so frequently misused. But this seems like a strict upgrade uh, in terms of ability to uh, to a manic vandal. I agree with that. Uh, Nixborn brute five mana for a seven three. I like Yargle better. Well, Yargle's... Is Yargle 7-3? No, it's a 9-3, and yeah. it costs 4. It costs 5. Was it 5? It's Yeah, but it's it's 1 black and 4 colors. 9-3 hmm. for 4 would actually be... I feel like that would be playable. I would just play that, dude. I feel like there's been a card like that, though. Omen in the Forge. Uh, 2 mana. When it enters the battlefield, deals 2 damage to any target. That's not bad. The Scry and the Devotion are really what I'm looking at here. Like, they're all Flash... Yeah. The scry and the devotion is really what's selling me. Like, obviously, if it's just a two-mana instant that deals two damage to any target, it sucks. But the fact that it sits on the board in a red deck and lets you later cash in for a scry, too, is is pretty good. Okay. I don't know if it's on the list, but, I mean, it's worth looking at. Like, I, I think these are all worth looking at. Okay. It's like a seal of... It's just literally seal of fire for one more mana. And flash. A seal fire does three damage. No, it does not. Seal fire does two damage. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Rob like Rob's off on stats for like one point on every card. It's got a three three one. Or, I thought it was, I thought it was a three one. It's damn a two it, one. Damn it, Bobby! That it Yargle, costs five. I thought it costs five. I thought it costs five. <laughs> and so that was just the last three, five minutes, people. That, by the way, if you watch this video, rewind it just now because I literally just the said, last three cards. I, you've so, got hold on. one card wrong. No, hold on. Yeah. I got. I'm gonna one up you here. The, literally, what I just did was I said and that's just in the last five minutes. Yeah. And if you watch the it was video, probably four minutes. I, no, I did this. <laughs> that's good. On accident. That's good. I did it completely. On and that's accident. just in the last five. That minutes, was in the last guys. four, five minutes, people. <laughs> Rob's lucky that Magic doesn't really use numbers. Yeah, fair. Orad of Mountains Blaze, two mana for a one-three. Discard a card, draw a card. Fucking get out of here. Ox, you like this? I'm kind of iffy on it. I I don't think it's great, but everyone seems to love this card. That's because I think the escape cost is two mana. It's five mana. I, I'm not paying five for this. So let me ask you something. Hit me. What other card? Costs two red and needs eight cards in the graveyard. Tibble. That lets you... And what the fuck? I don't know. You said two mana. Just listen to me. Okay. It costs two red mana to cast it. You need eight cards in your graveyard. And when it comes into play, you discard your hand and draw three. Bedlam Brother? That's the exact card. Yeah. Because the isn't that, isn't that six and two? Yeah, I believe so. No, this is definitely a, a, rev, a yeah, it's reveler. Yeah, it's just this. It's just this reveler, right? But but it's just the front half of it's just worse. But I'd rather have a three four than a five three or a four a four two. I, I mean, think four toughness is better, and I mean, plus it has prowess. Reveler is just better, right? The card is just better. I yeah, I think so. I don't like this card, but everyone likes it, so <sighs> you this know. Is, this, you know this why this is better? This card doesn't appeal to me, so it's hard for me to evaluate it. I, I think same. I'm the exact same. I look at this and I see five mana four two. I don't like playing decks where I have to unload my whole hand. And this card's going to be its best when I have no cards in hand. What I was going to say is the only reason, the only way this card is better, Reveler in multiples was bad. This card in multiples, not bad because of escape. That's the only difference that I see. Reveler, you have to, like, if you, if you have, if you have multiple Revelers in your hand, mm -hmm. you have to discard them when you cast your Reveler. Oh, because then this guy just yes, goes Yes, but this guy, you just put him in the garbage can, you cast him for two. So this guy gets yeah, better. Yeah, but like, okay, so you, you put him in the graveyard, one. but like, you have to exile eight, fuck, eight cards yes. is a lot, dude. It's a lot. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't want to put it on the list, but I don't want to, I also don't want to be no. like. Well, it depends. What do you use I don't your want list to for? What's well, our list, right? Like, I'm not doing the set review myself what, and you're not just what, joining me. It's always been our set review. You're focusing on the wrong thing. What? What is it? What is it? What, what is do the you, list Well, my point is, what do you think it's for? Well, I'm guessing you put it in the comments, maybe? 
Oh yeah, put it in the comments. Right. Yeah, it goes it goes in the description of the YouTube video. Okay, then yes, I would put it in the list. Oh fuck god. I don't want to. I'm going to, but I don't want to. I just I can never see sleeving this card up and being like, yes, I'm gonna cast this card. Phoenix of Ash. See this card I like though. This card we two be casting. two for three. So it's just your typical Phoenix with flying and haste. You can pump it, which is a great ability for a Phoenix. So it's yes. a it's a four two if and you pump it. And it's plus two. Six two if you pump it. Right. And then like the escape is great because it's only three cards you have to exile, and then it gets a counter on it. So it's a three three. It's a three three for four when you ex when you escape it, and three cards is not hard no. to do in a in a Especially red deck. Especially a red deck. Hey, real quick. Uh, cause it doesn't say in the text here. Yeah. Oh no, escape is an alternate casting cost. Yeah, it says you okay, may so cast. Okay, so if it's a creature, you have to cast on your turn. It's not. It's not an ability. Yeah, it's. It says. Okay. Yeah, cause it says cast in the, in yeah, the okay, text. Yeah, okay. We good. That card's really good though. Portent. I agree with you. Really good. And especially like if you're using your your black um, what's the guy called? Gravebreaker Lamia to you fetch can put it? Phoenix of Ash in the yeah. graveyard. Yeah. Kaka Phoenix. What is it? No, that's a completely different card. You're thinking of Catablabus. Uh, Ephemia, the Cacophonia. Cacophony. Portent of, portent, portent of Betrayal. Uh, four mana for gain control of a creature. It gains untap it. It gains haste and scry. So this is just active treason with scry. And then do you um, pay and one a mana more? cost. No, I'm, I'm done. Mana cost is this. Mana. Perforous, blood, blood, bronze, blooded. Five mana for a seven, six. Other creatures get haste. Which is great because when I'm when I'm playing a five mana creature, the, the 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 only thing I want is all future creatures to get haste, uh, because I have a lot left after that in my red deck. Um, three mana, you may put a red creature card or an artifact card from your from your hand onto the battlefield. <clears throat> Again, like once I played my five mana creature on five, and I go into my sixth turn, with it's not six even a mana, creature probably. <laughs> um, the one thing I want to do is put my my cards that cost more than six because I can't cast them. Like I want to put my seven drops and eight drops into play for three mana instead. Um, so yeah, I mean, perf into Drakkar Seth. I'd rather just pay one more mana and just cast a Drakkar Cast Seth. it, I think. I, I mean, I think I'd rather spend five instead of spending five on this. I'd rather spend four on Iron Crag Feet and just play it on turn four. So what's funny about Iron Crag Feet yeah. is when I was when I knew I was coming over here, I started looking to build decks. And the very first thing I did was go. Let me read Perforce again because I forgot what it did because I was reading a tweet about it. I was like, I forgot. Let me check it again. I was like, Oh, it's right. It's a sneak attack, but it costs one more mana than Iron Crag Feet, so you can't even do it with Iron Crag. That, that's that's a fail to me. Like this, this should, oh, so you, you should, should go, like, be able to four, Iron, Crag, Iron Crag play this, play this, and, and activate in, it because it's not accounting a spell. Yep, but you can't. That's really sad, actually. Yeah, that's what, it's one mana. Short. Oh, because then it would give you haste too. Yeah, exactly. That would have been cool. Yeah, but I, that would have been great up. because Iron Crag feed is a card that seems powerful, but it's not like it's it, but it doesn't have what you need in standard to do something with it. Yeah, like that that would be doable. Right. Like I I would be looking at this going yes because. Even if you have this card on the board and you have you draw an Iron Crag feat later on, you can Iron Crag to put two dudes in play. You know what I mean? Like, it's I'm not, not a fan of this useless. card. No, I don't like. This I don't card think it's at all. great. Nope. I think I think all the abilities take place after they're relevant. Yep. If this guy costs three, like Heliod, which is a ridiculously pushed, yeah. um, then like yeah, great. Turn four, I can play a four drop that has haste. I can play for th for three mana on turn four. I can put a bigger creature into play. But like the fact that you can't even activate this until turn six. Like, how big are the creatures you're going to be cheating into play? Scissors wants to know if we can back up and start over. They just got here. Uh, Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, wait. I actually meant no. Okay. I meant no. Okay. But um, these will be up tomorrow, Saturday, and, and Sunday. Sunday on the tubes of you. That always sounds weird. Perforosis Intervention. <clears throat> uh, create an X1 red elemental creature token with trample and haste. So it basically makes a ball lightning for a much worse cost. So if you want a ball lightning, you got to pay Cost. seven mana instead of three, right? What? Yep. Oh, for a ball lightning, there's six one, yeah. Uh, or it deals twice X damage to a creature or planeswalker. This is probably the worst of them. We've I, seen it's still so playable though, right? Because the second ability. I think it's still playable because the X scaling. Like if they have a five mana planeswalker, you, for four mana you can kill it, which is basically on par with, or, or six loyalty, six loyalty or five loyalty. If planeswalker. there's a Jeskai deck, I think this. Man, it is a sorcery though. It's which a sorcery. Is yeah, I know. This one's not as great. No, this is the worst one. Like, like I compare the first part because I want to be able to use both modes effectively. But like, a ball lightning is a six one for three mana, and for to do that here, it's seven mana. Even if I want like a four one, it's still <laughs> what is what is, for a four? It's five mana. Like Chat just said, uh, the, this card feels like they put the word twice in the wrong part. I agree with you. I think they both should say twice. Honestly. Yeah, I don't think twice is broken at both of them. Like, if you're paying six mana for a card in a deck that's playing a card like this, you should be able to get a ten-one, because you're probably not attacking with other dudes anyways. 
but also it dies at the end of the next step. So it's yeah. like six mana, right? Like yeah. Inferno Titan costs six mana. Again, like let's compare it to other cards that exist, and like this is not better than like an Inferno Titan in any in any by any metric, right? No. So I don't know. Like, do you I w- put this on the list? I, I honestly wouldn't even put it on the list. I don't. I wouldn't. I don't think it's. I'm not played. super sold on it. There's a lot of other ways to kill stuff in red. I think that this is not necessary. If this said deals X damage to target creature and or planeswalker, I'd be like, oh, I'm on board. Well, that'd be nutty. Like if you can kill one dude and one planeswalker. Satyr's cunning one mana for create a one one satyr creature token and you can escape it. So make a bunch of dudes. Nope. Uh, Scophos Maze Warden. <laughs> Did you like that? That was funny. Sco- <laughs> that I laughed. <laughs> Four mana for a three four that can become a four three and then a five two and then a six one ball lightning. Whenever another creature becomes the target of an ability of a land you control named Labyrinth of Scof- Labyrinth of Scophos, you may have Scophos Maze Warden fight that creature. This is no good. What? Whenever another creature becomes the target of an ability, whenever you may, whenever you Maze of it, their creature with the the new land, it fights the creature. So if you happen to have the rare land, yep, and they happen to run their creature into your rare land. And and your Scophos on board, and you have this guy on board, and they ran their creature into your maze of it. You just get to kill it. Ba- yeah, if all that comes together, you deserve to kill it. It deserves death. Yeah, like if you're like, we well, you got four mana in that in that maze card, and you got the maze warden. <laughs> you got it. All right, I'll attack my three three. All, like, <laughs> all right, uh, I'll send it home I and like, kill it. I guess. I like to fight it. That's cute. Like yeah. the flavor is cute, but like, what's the point, man? Scophos War Leader, five mana for a four five. Uh, sacrifice another creature. It gets plus one plus one menace. No, that's cool. Do you think it's a cat deck? No, you don't want to sacrifice. You don't pay this guy. <laughs> you don't pay five mana for this dude. Two three trample at the beginning of each combat if you control a creature with power four or greater. Oh God. No. Funny yeah. art though. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, Seder cowgirl. Yeehaw. Storm Herald. Harold. Oh, Harold, come home. Three mana haste for three two. Okay. Ooh. When it enters the battlefield, return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. I just would probably play this as a three mana three two haste. Exile those auras at the beginning of your next end step. Oh, all right. If those auras would leave the battlefield, exile them instead. All right. That's. How long until someone in chat says something about putting hammers on it in, in, in older formats? Hammers. <laughs> Yeah, the, the ones that give plus ten, plus ten. That's an that's an equipment, not an enchantment. That's not an aura. Okay, Eldrazi conscri- conscription. See, that's now you're talking my language. Yeah, but you don't get the you don't get. I top four to PTQ stuff. with Eldrazi conscription and Sovereigns of Lost Alara. So you mean you didn't win? I didn't, and I misplayed, and I know exactly where I misplayed. And you I want to talk about it. it right now? No. Oh, okay, I was hoping you said yes. I might actually have an article about it. Do you? Yeah, maybe. Storms. Wait, so what? What do we think about this card? Is it good? No. All right. Storm's Wrath, I'm going to put this one immediately. This card is great. Deals I'll, four I'll damage it. to each creature and each Planeswalker. It is just like literally for four mana. It's one less than uh, than Hour of Devastation, which is five mana. Deal five damage to each creature and each non Nicobolus Planeswalker. This, however, does deal damage to Nicobolus himself as well. <clears throat> uh, four damage is probably not enough to kill him, but the fact that it kills each and every or deals damage to each and every Planeswalker is, is just great. Storm Herald also triggers all your constellation friends, right? If you have them, and if you have, you know, auras in the graveyard, right? Like, you know, I mean, it, it takes a lot to get going. Also, it's three mana, so like, how many things are you going to have in the graveyard when you want to cast this? Whereas, like, if this was like a five drop, you'd be like, okay, I might have some. Wait, enchantments. how does this hit your your enchantments? Because you're returning them from the battlefield, it doesn't hit your enchantments. It triggers your constellation cards, because. Auras are entering the battlefield. Oh, you're saying that when I return an aura with this, it because it I'm returning an aura, it triggers constellation. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's not a thing. Tectonic giant also pretty bonkers. This card is nuts. I like. I actually like this this uh, this templating for a card. Where so it doesn't have an enters the battlefield ability, um, but whenever it attacks, which is very Titan esque, or whenever a, it's the target of a spell an opponent controls, you get to do these things, which is great because it means like. Uh, the best thing about enters the battlefield abilities is that you always get value from them even if they die. But this this is also like, okay, short of a Wrath of God effect, if your opponent wants to get rid of this, you are going to either deal three damage to each opponent, or you're going to exile the top two cards, and until the end of your next turn, you can play them. So if they kill this guy and your opponent, if your opponent kills this guy in their turn, you get you get to basically light up the stage yeah. and, uh, and play those two cards. Uh, or one of them. You get to play one of them. But, I mean, this card's great for three, three, four for four is just great. Yeah, I like this card. Um, I don't see where it fits, but I like this card. 
it fits in any red deck. Like, I mean, you you look at you're like, okay, well, these are the three decks in the meta game right now, and if it doesn't fit into one of those, I have no idea what it's going to be used as. Whereas I look at it and I'm like, this would this would go cool in like a mid range red deck that was just trying to like outvalue things. Because I mean, this guy's attacking as a six four. I can see this as like a Jundish type card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it's not an aggro card. Four mana is too steep. Um, I think it's good. It's great. I I agree. The card is sweet, and like you said, I like the templating. Thrill of Possibility this is the classic two mana. As an additional cost to cast this, discard a card, draw two cards. It's nice that Thrill of Possibility is the new standard over uh, Tormenting Voice. So instead of, uh, it's just the, the instant version. We already had it already. Right, but I like that yeah. it's a new standard. They're not printing Tormenting Voice, they're just printing no, Thrill of Possibility. I think it's just, obviously it's better. And obviously I, it's and, better. I, and I like it a lot, on the whole. This is also good with... Uh, the one that makes the tokens impossible. Improbable alliance. Improbable alliance. There you go. Triumph of Enax. Three mana. Until the end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus X, plus O, where X is the number of lower counters on the triumph. So plus one, plus O, plus two, plus three. This is not exciting because those are not exciting. I don't like this card. Target creature control fights up to one target creature you don't control. Ish, like may- maybe there's an argument if it said deals damage to target creature and not fight. Because in red, you're not fighting with big stuff. Right. You got you're like a training. three one. And I'm like, all right, cool. So it's a. Yeah, it's a dead one. It's a dead one. Yeah, this card's <laughs> not great. Underworld Breach. Everyone loves this, and it's another card that I just can't wrap my head around. What? I don't play decks that like cards like this. Well, okay, that's what it is then. Two mana. Each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. Um, at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice it. Sure, so like you play it for two. Uh, you get all your cards have escape now, right? But like... How much mana are you expecting to have, and like what cards are you? So be- this will do nothing in standard. Okay, sure, that's what I want to hear then. But in legacy, this with like Lion's Eye Diamond, you just start going off. Do you have that many cards in your graveyard that you can just? You immediately pitch your hand. That's that's five cards right there. You can have five cards. Yeah, if you have seven cards in hand. Oh, I see what you're saying. So like you go, what do you play land? You play okay. So no, you don't have to play land. You, you play, play Lion's this. Eye you play land. You play Lion's Eye. You don't have to play land. But then, how do you play this if you have Lion's Eye Diamond? Oh, fair. You're like, right. you have to play this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have two lands in play. And oh, okay. Lion's so you Diamond. have to go land, right of flame, this, Lion's Eye Diamond. So land, right of flame, this, Lion's Eye Diamond. That's so let's four say cards. On, on the draw, you're pitching four cards. And then, sure. you, then Lion's Eye Diamond goes to the graveyard as well. That's five cards. Right. So now you're able to, like, play one card from your graveyard. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not like the ability is strong, but the escape cost is high. It is. It is. Right? Like, instead of having, like, it, with Yogmoth's Will, you're like, let me cast every card for free. This is like you can cast one card for every four cards in your graveyard. Uh, there's already a combo that lets you flip. I'm sure there it. is. Man, the internet hive mind is insane. It's awesome. It's a little... I don't actually like it as much as you do, I think, because I think I like the the ability to figure these things out, whereas, like, oh, cool, it just exists. Like, I feel like it just exists. Like, the knowledge of this card and what you can do to break it just exists now. Because one person found it, so, like, now it just exists. And I don't know, that's, like... Does that make sense? Does anyone else agree with that? Like... I definitely don't think this... I don't think this card is broken. Oh, well, I mean... I, I wouldn't... This card, to me, can't be a good card. This card is only broken or it's unplayable. Right, I agree with that. Yeah. But I also don't think, like, just because, like... In a certain deck, if you assemble a certain sequence of things, it does it it does what it what you want it to do. I got it. I don't now. think that makes it broken. So, so here's here's your here's your loop. Your loop is you cast this card mm-hmm. with a lion's eye diamond, you discard your hand. Right. Okay. Well the lion's eye diamond play. Right. right. You right. sacrifice the lion's eye diamond to get your mana, discard your hand, right? And then you cast brain freeze on yourself. So that right there you're already mill- milling nine cards. And then you can mill cards to re get your get your Lion's Eye Diamond back. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I like Brain that, Freeze. That's the loop. That's a loop to mill your deck, and then you just start going off from there. So the reason this is better than Yawgmoth's Will is because this allows you to cast the same card repeatedly. Also, this is on the board, so it affects Correct. future cards that hit your graveyard. Well, no, it dies at the end. Right, but it stays on your board for the whole oh, turn. Oh, if something, Whereas uh, yeah. Yawgmoth's Will, if I cast it, and then I play more cards that go to the graveyard, mm-hmm. they, they won't go to the graveyard. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I can only cast the cards that are in there when I cast Yawgmoth's Will, yeah. because all future cards get exiled. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll put it on the list. I think it's a strong card, especially if you can if you can do it. But if like, use it. like the thing is, like I don't play Magic in the sense that like yeah. I'm gonna play this combo card. I'm gonna discard my whole hand, and then I'm gonna brain freeze right. myself. Like you can get a real sense of like how I see Magic: The Gathering, and like right. that's I'm, not I'm that way. That that's I, not a thing that like appeals to me at all. I'm yeah. like, you're gonna do this. I just want to play a Siege Rhino, or I want to <laughs> like dig through time on your turn and draw two cards like yeah. that's what i want to be doing in Magic. so like earlier that's actually funny you bring that up so when we were doing the white cards and i was talking about heliod and i was like i'm not a person that would play white like white aggro decks or right. something like that i was like but heliod makes me want to play mono white because it's like a broken because that's card that's that, like, not what i play i yeah. i want to play cards like that you know what i mean whereas what, you fires? no <laughs> yeah i mean i'm on the rolled fires yeah. in your yeah, Rob is a big Underworld Fires fan. He's like, I want to deal one damage I love the fire to each under, creature under. and each Planeswalker. If a permanent self damage to it would die, exile instead. Wow. Uh, still no. no I mean, not. this is just like poor Pyroclasm. Bad yeah. man's, poor man's Pyroclasm. Yeah. How many calls did I miss, you think, while I was... Uh, seven. Um, oh, just one. It was it was actually Rob Gonzalez. Uh, <sighs> underworld Rage Hound. This is what Rob... Is called sometimes. It attacks each combat if able. It's a 3 1 for 2. Look, a 3 1 for 2. That's your favorite. It is? Exile three other cards from your graveyard to bring it back and it escapes with a 1 1 counter. So then it becomes a 4 2. I thought this cost three. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see what you did there. Uh, Wrap in Flames. Like, this card's bad, but like, it has been played in sideboards. Mm -hmm. Like, it makes. Yeah, it, it lets it breaks open a board, a board state. Yep, it breaks down a board state. If, if yep. there are decks in the format, like, it kills three edge wall innkeepers, for example. Yep. Like, there are things this card does. If you're playing mono red and you're getting locked down by like a mid range green yep. deck, you it's, just wrap in flames. There's a lot of times where this card says, uh, creatures are, your creatures you are unblockable. <laughs> right, exactly. So, I mean, like, don't, don't, don't be sleeping on wrap in flames. It's no. not a great card. No. But it can do a thing. Once did it once a, a rasta of the endless web huh. i like this card it's all right oh, it costs four by the time its ability is relevant it's not gonna hit the board what you're using this you're using this for this this card would you'd look at it and go all right i'm playing against blue green flash so i'm gonna board this in well it gets countered it costs four this is boop what if you're playing this in blue green flash it's opponent what if they're playing blue green flash? Okay. I actually thought it was whenever you cast an instant sorcery. Oh, you okay. One, one two, and that's this is much worse. You feel real dummy right now, don't you? I do. I feel real dummy right now. <laughs> I feel real dummy, as Rob would say. Mm -mm -mm. I wanted to put on. It's also legendary, which means like Ooh, I can't have commander. two Arastas. No, you can't handle two Arastas. The, <laughs> you can't handle no. the two. Dude, people Arastas. don't like spiders. We definitely want to. The binding of the titans. Each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Exile up to... No, nope. That does nothing. That's just a blank. Um, exile up to two target cards from graveyards. For each creature card exiled this way, gain a life. That's also not great. It's good in a Return self, a creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. So I thought about putting this card in um, the Keith's deck. Because it's a two-mana... It's a, it's a play on two that mills you. The Anthony Keith's deck? Yeah, I don't ever want to feel. I saw someone play that card today. It was so good. It was. No one stupid. knows what you're talking about. So we'll just we'll get to it when we get to it. How's that? I appreciate you, but no one knows what you're talking. You just literally talked. Because I was telling you, I wasn't telling them. I don't care about. But that. you're live, so you're telling everybody. I'm. I'm always. Chain live. web Ar Arachner, one mana for a one two with reach. I actually like this card. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. Uh, but when you escape it, it's a four. It's a four five, and you can just eat their flyers. Nom, 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 I think this card's not bad. It's okay. Okay, I want to write it down because I like it. You can put okay. it on there, man. It's been a while. I know you want to put something on the list, so just do it. <laughs> it's our first green card, man. <sighs> We're already in the seas. It's a spider with creepy human hands. Well, to be fair, it there's does only have like, human hands. There's only like two two green cards before C, which is interesting. Did you see the human hands? Oh God! Oh God! <sighs> Can you imagine? That's that's terrifying. <sighs> Destiny Spinner. Two mana for a 2-3. Creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. That's not bad. Pretty good. Target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste, where X is the number of enchantments right. you control. In an enchantment so deck, again, we're doing it. As Rob would say, the floor is the enchantment. The, the land is a 1-1 one, one because you have you always have at least Destiny Spinner in play. So Can I ask you a question? Uh-huh. All right. Go back. All right. You're walking down the street. You're on the sidewalk. Nope. I'm He's noping, incapacitated. I'm right out of there. He's incapacitated. 
all of his little leggies with hands are broken. Yep, he's just chilling. But they exist, and I can see them. Yeah, I can see his spidery yeah, and he's arms like with, with human hands. With human on hands. hands, he's got his little chain too, and he's like whipping it at you, saying, "Hey, man, look at me." Oh, he can't break his arm. I thought you broke. said he's incapacitated. He's incapacitated. Do you poke it with a stick? No, I punt that bitch right <laughs> on <laughs> out, man. He's gone. I'm, str- <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Tom Brady, my dude. Does Are he punt? You? No, he throws. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Patrick Mahomes up in this bitch. He throws. Okay. Do they all fucking throw, Rob? Uh, well, all the quarterbacks kick? that you're naming, yes, they all, they all throw. All right, Jameis is Winston. Okay, he, he, well, he throws the other team. <laughs> but does he, does he kick? No. Damn it! I don't know football, guys. Soccer? Can you name a soccer player? Uh. Yes. Yeah, say it. You're about to say an R. No, I was gonna say like, no, I was just gonna make up a name. I'll be honest with you. I mean, just pick a Spanish one. <laughs> Racist. I'm Spanish, so it's not. Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Three mana for a 2-4. Very Courser of Crufix. You may play an additional land on each one of your turns. Very Oracle of Moldiah. Lands you control are every basic type in addition to other types. <laughs> Very Prismatic Omen. This card's great. This card's really good. I want to play it with Bolas of Citadel. I sent you a couple Bolas of Citadel lists with this. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Oh, I did. actually, I didn't, did I? I don't know. I only sent you the Bolas list, not Bolas of Citadel. It's true. What were you laughing at? I was laughing because I, re- I read the comment, the, the thing you said. I uh, I punt that bitch right on out like to- I'm like Tom Brady. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, This guy looks like he's posing for the gram. <laughs> is that he a guy? Is. is that a guy? Yeah, I guess so. Yes, otherwise you wouldn't see a nipple, Rob. It's not a nipple, it's a vine. Right, right here? Do it is... for the vine. Right there, dude. No, it's a vine. They just chopped it. They trimmed it. They just, chopped it, they trimmed they it. They trimmed it. They just, what did they trim? They trimmed the vine coming out. It's not attached to it. The rest of them are? They just gave it the old chop. It was time to trim them down. They donated them. Please stop. 10-inch vine. Please stop. <laughs> the first I ruin games. Two and a green. One, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier token. Two, put three 1-1 one, one counters on target creature control. Doesn't have to be the 1-1. One, one. Could be anybody. Three, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw two cards. Which is good, because if you put the three counters on the one one, you got a four four. Four, create a gold. It's a pretty good card. It's it. I, I like it. A gold token is just a treasure, isn't it? No. Gold or not token a treasure. Uh, lotus petal. Mana. Right, correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, treasure token. What does a treasure token do? I thought a treasure token was the was literally a, a, a lotus petal. I think you're right then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking because I'm getting clues, treasures, and free. Yeah, there's an F ton of them. What's the new one now? Foods. Clues. We said that. I said, oh, I hate you. I black out. You don't have to tap a gold to sack it. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Gift of strength. Can you name another card that makes a gold token? A gold token? Guild. Guild. Oh, guild. Yes, that is the... That <laughs> the way you said it made it sound like it had a U in it. Oh yeah, how I, how can I have said it differently? How can I have said it differently, Rob? I don't know, but I swear when you said guild, I'm like, no dummy. I'm like, oh wait a minute, <laughs> like guild? It's called guild. Oh guild. It's called guild. I like so you said oh guild as if you realized that the card I was talking to. You didn't say it any differently. You're I know like, guild. It's just your oh accent. guild. What accent? I said it the same. <laughs> I knew the card because I played Mono Black Commander, so I knew what card it was. But when you said guild, I'm like, wrong, idiot. <laughs> and then you thought and then of it. I was like, oh, wow. It's, I it's like guild. how you stop yourself. You're like, all right, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Let me think about this. <laughs> no. Oh, guild. I'm going to shoot from the hip kind of guy. You didn't, but you didn't. You gave me a time. You gave no, me- well, because I was trying to understand how you spelled the word guild. This stream is guild. <laughs> 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 All right, Hydra's uh, Growth, three mana. Hydra's Growth enters battle if you put a 1 1 counter on Enchanted Creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of 1 1 counters. This is good with Stone Cold Serpent. This is good in Limited. This is good with Polycronos. This is good in Limited. This is good with anything with co- with counters. This is good in Limited. It's really good in Limited, too. It broke me in Limited. I was like, well, I can't beat you that. Got, dude, how many times did you get broken? You got broke a bunch. Dude, I went 1 4 in matches. Yeah, you did. So, yeah, you <laughs> did. I was like, you were watching. Yeah, you did. I remember that. That means you probably. That means you probably lost nine games. Hydrax. This isn't give. This isn't give trample, right? No, no it's just terrible. Hy- Hyrax Tower Scout. Three mana for a three-three. When it enters the battlefield, untap a creature. That's exciting. 
Illusian Caryatid. You are no Sylvan Caryatid, my friend. You wish. I am Groot. I, that does look a lot more like Groot. Two mana for a 1-1. One, one. Add a mana of any color. If you control a creature about four greater, add two mana of any one color. Stinks. I love cards that are like, if you have a big thing, this will help you with your big, your future big things. And I'm like, okay, thanks, but I'm trying to get to the first big thing. <laughs> oh, did you know the Kiki Jiki meme? Did you see that one? No. Hold on. Old Kikums McJikums, as you would say. Uh, This is what Mike said the other day. Let me know what you think. With our That's copy. a good idea, actually. Now, if he doesn't kill our Kijigigigi. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Let's play it again. again? Kill our Kijigigigi. Kijigigigi, is that okay, what you... Okay, but I gotta know. Do you think he did that on purpose? No, he just doesn't know how to talk sometimes. It just, he blacked it, out. The words just get, the, the words get tangled up. He Listen. gets tired and he doesn't want to open his mouth? Listen. He doesn't kill our Kijigigigi. Gigi <laughs> like that's not what it sounds it's like. Called. Something that sounds like something I'm gonna say to our baby, and then I just lose it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? The, the next turn we can win. <laughs> I'm he sorry, this is yeah, our what? On no, he had no idea. That was the I know the embarrassment. He was laughter. like, it was whoops. The embarrassment laughter. Inspire off four mana. Prevent all combat damage dealt this turn, except by combat damage that would be dealt by enchanted creatures and enchant minted enchant mint creatures. Scry two. Okay. I, just, I just like okay, cool. See you later. Four mana fog. Cool. Like even if they have, even if there's a fog deck, I don't see myself playing this one. Nope. Like not only is it four mana, but like if they have enchantment creatures, which could be immensely popular, it like negates half of the attackers probably. So, yep. Colossus, Colossus's design six mana. <laughs> I'm already out. Mana I'm already checked out. Mana Clothus. Every time I see a, a common or an uncommon that costs six mana, my eyes roll back in my head. Creatures you control get plus X plus X. And trample. Nope, doesn't say that. Oh. Uh, where X is your devotion to green. Okay, so what this says is all your creatures get a lot of power, but your opponent will know about it because it it's not an instant, and uh, none of it will get through because they'll just chump block all your idiots. Next. I guess that's fine, but I don't, you know. Oh, Poor guy. Why? This chimera. Uh, it seems fine. It's loathsome, but that's mm -hmm. fine. 4-1 for 3. That's so bad. With escape. And then when it escapes, it gets uh, to 5-2. Mantle of the Wolf. Because there's a mantle of the wolf. Four mana. Uh, enchanted creature, it's plus four, plus four. That's a good rate. When it enters, when it's put into a graveyard, create two wolves. Seems good. Don't think it's good. The problem with this is the problem that they fixed when they made Bestow with the mechanic. Uh, Bestow says, like, it's a, it, you know, you can play the creature as an enchantment. Uh, as an enchant creature, but if you do and the creature dies, like if they respond by killing the creature, the bestow creature just comes into play. It doesn't go to the graveyard, right? So if I play like my boon satyr to give my creature plus four plus two as an enchantment and they kill the creature I'm targeting, I get to keep the boon satyr. I didn't know that. Really? I swear to God, I didn't know that. Yeah, like you don't get to, you don't, they, they can't two for one you with bestow. So if you're which bestowing is the best part of it. something? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, if you're bestowing something, like, and they kill the creature in response, yeah. you still get to keep the creature. Mm. But the problem is this, like, it never. It, it just it, goes straight to the yeah. Game. It encourages the mantle to go to the graveyard, but like the the most common time that's going to happen is when you go to try to put it on the creature. So like if you can sneak it in, that's cool. But even then, like they could just bounce it, like and then you just still get two for one, like an idiot. No, wait, no. I guess they even if they bounce, well they can. No, they can still bounce it. They can bounce a creature in response to it. In response, right? But yeah. if it's on the battlefield, once you get this on the battlefield, usually you're you're probably pretty good. If they exile the creature, you still get the wolves. If you exile, if you bounce the creature, you still get the wolves. So this is actually not terrible if you can get it on the battlefield. But the problem with that is... Getting it on the battlefield. Is getting it on the battlefield, right? Wait, wait. If you got the wolves, if it fizzles... Yeah, exactly. If they kill the creature... Yeah, what if it said, like, when Mantle of the Wolves is put into the graveyard from the battlefield or the stack, create would, two No, two it should two. just say when, when it is put into the graveyard. Uh, I don't think that's true because then there could be discard decks where you discard like two of these on turn one yeah. and then you just get four wolves. Like you want to you want to make sure they cast it. No, this does not give you wolves if they if they kill the creature in response. It doesn't enter no, the battlefield. No, because it's never in the battlefield. It says when it is put into the graveyard from the battlefield. So if you like put this on the stack to target a creature and they kill the creature, it never gets it never makes it to the battlefield. Nope. Um so, yeah, like, I mean, I think it'd be great if it said, if, if this is put into a graveyard from the battlefield or the stack, create two wolves. Because then it ensures you're casting it. 
but it prevents that that shitty blowout feeling. Yeah, um, that's a real bad, feeling. especially for a rare. <coughs> you know what follows the uh, "I'm gonna destroy your creature" in response to the mantle? It's always the uh, "Oh yeah, they always fucking have it." <laughs> well, that's why you never play this, right? But like, it's it's. It's funny because like then you can play Thirst for Knowledge or whatever that card is. is that what the card Thirst for Knowledge? No, no, uh, no, Thirst for the red card. The red card lets you draws two. It lets you draws two. I don't fucking know what you're talking about. The card, the red card, that's dr- Thrill of Possibility. Oh. Right? You could play Thrill of Possibility, discard two of these, draw two, or discard one, I guess, or Cathartic Reunion, discard two, draw three, and then make four wolves. Like that's just insane. That'd be cool. So like you really just want to have you. I, <laughs> I think I think if this card said when it's put into the graveyard from the stack no, of the battlefield, like it would be oh, great. Oh yeah, the way that you're would be great. It, yes, I agree. Because I'm like, cool. I pay four. Oh, you kill my guy in response. That would I'll actually make, make this a playable strong card. Because right. no matter what, but you're not broken. Yep. Right. And then I'm still I'm paying I'm getting two twos for four. Yeah. And my opponent used the removal spell. Like yep. that's that's fine. That's a good rate. Yep. But I don't design magic cards, so. Moss Viper one one death touch for one. This is like the second small, tiny death touch creature that we have. The other one was a two the other one, one was two. yeah. The other one was two 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 one for two one in black. Um, I love this art. This art is great. It's pretty cool. And uh, the cards are good too. I like it. I'm not gonna put it on the list, but yeah, this is a card that might see play. Mystic repeal. I love mm. this card. Is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're already on M, and we only have four green cards so far, which is funny because I feel like green is being a little bit dialed back in oh, this don't set. Don't worry, we'll find oh. more that are worth it. Yeah, this card's great. Putting an enchantment on the bottom of its owner's library for one mana at instant speed is just great. Deals with all the gods. This is a fun snake. <laughs> um, I don't think they'd be afraid of using the on the stack templating though, because like they already use that for like you know, there's there's other things like uh maybe maybe they don't. There's nothing with the word stack, but they they the way they use that word is by saying spell. Right, because it's Instead not a permanent of, yep, right. Exactly. Well, like, okay, let's let's look at. Is there another way we can word that? When Mantle Wolf is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, uh, or as a spell, does that work? I mean, that would make sense, but I just don't see them doing that. Right, but there's got to be a way. Like, there has to be a way. And if there's not a way, they should really figure out a way because it's 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 intuitive and it <clears throat> doesn't actually like hurt. Like, it's just it opens a lot of design space. Nessie and Boar, five mana for a ten six. All creatures able to block it do so. Whenever it becomes blocked by a creature. Whenever it becomes blocked. So if. So if I have like three guys, they all block this guy and I draw three cards. They draw three cards. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. That seems fucking terrible. <laughs> this is terrible. What the? F- <laughs> this thing sucks. Get out of here. Let's go. Wow, dude. That's horrible. Piggy, pig, pig. Nessie and Horn Beetle. Two mana for a 2-2, two, two, which is a fine rate. At the beginning of combat, if you control another creature with power four or greater, put a 1-1 one, one cat. This is not bad. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 at the mo- at the least, and then like if you have a bigger it's creature, bigger. it just keeps getting bigger every sure. turn. I'm not going to put it on the list because I don't know where it would ever fit, but like, it's not a bad design. Uh, 2 mana for a 1-3. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, look at the top 3 cards. You may reveal them. You may reveal a land card and put them in your in, the, in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. This was also a 4 out of in the deck that I watched top fif- playing in top 15. But I'll I, put it. I wish they I went to the... I kind of wish they went to the graveyard. I don't think it's any good. Really? No, this is not playable. It draws you a card like every time you play an enchantment, though. Yeah. What? That doesn't mean anything. That's a meaningless statement. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's any good. Why? There are probably. But I made. There a, I made a, two drops that I think you'd be playing over this. You'd probably be playing an actual enchantment instead of this, like in an enchantment. You're playing an enchantment deck. I don't. I don't think this is any good. But it draws you a card every turn. Maybe. I, I don't. I just don't think this is any good. But you're not giving me reasons why. You're just you're because saying I, like, I can't. I, I don't have. Hey, one for mom, you. why can't you? Why can't I watch this movie? Oh, because I said so. Oh, cool. Well, that works when you're a parent and you don't want to have to justify it to your kids. But like, when we're trying to like figure out why this card's any good, I just I don't I don't think you're going to spend turn two in order to fetch a land every time you cast a spell. I don't think that's going to happen. It sounds dumb when I say it out loud, but I don't. I don't <laughs> think so. I don't. I don't think. What it's do you right. mean you're going to spend turn two? Like it's just two mana, man. I'm gonna put it on the list. You can, you can disagree if you'd like. I'll put Rob sucks in parentheses afterwards, so that people know that like that you suck. He's trying to fix a chair with a pop tart. I don't know what that means. I but, also don't know what that but means. You, but you can't fix a chair with a pop tart, so you maybe you can't. Who's Nexus Wardens? Three mana for a one four with reach. Yeah. Whenever an enchantment is battlefield, gains two life. Yeah. 
Nah. Nylia, keen eyed. Four mana for a five six. All right, good rate. Creature spells cost one less. Again, like. I guess it's fine, but this, like, Garen Brig Castle does this already. Like, it turns my four mana into five mana. This turns my. Or it turns my five mana into six mana, right? Like Kind it, of, but it, this right. allows you to cast multiple spells at, at a cheaper rate on sure, one turn. Sure, but how many. Okay, sure. Reveal the top card of your library if it's a creature card, put it in your hand, otherwise you may put it on the bottom in your graveyard. Like, that's just a worse Duskwatch recruiter ability, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, not, not necessarily worse. It allows you to manipulate the top card of your library. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, it's different. Yep. If it said, if it said otherwise, put it. If it said put it in your graveyard, isn't this you have the a same choice. art as the original Nylia? Good lord, it's close. Wow. Oh it, no, she's facing the other mirror. way. Look, they're right next to each other. Look at the picture. What do you mean? Go back to your gallery. Oh, like search. they're mirrored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's blue. So. She's blue, da boo dee, da boo die, da boo dee, da boo da. Yeah, so that's the original Nylia. <laughs> and now it's just covering Rob. And we're just going to finish it like this, guys. Uh, so, I mean, what do you think of this card? Is it going to be good? I think it's good. I don't know where it goes, but it's definitely good. Well, all right, I'll write it down, but I don't like it. I don't like it. I just think all these gods, like, except for Thassa, because Thassa has a, a much, it feels like a much stronger static ability. Mm -hmm. Like, all of these activated abilities are like kind of meh like three mana to like reveal one card like how much mana am i really sinking into this ability? this card's pretty good with fires fires yeah because you don't use your mana oh fires spells. of invention yeah sure i mean i, I don't see a fires deck in green but <laughs> i don't know all right i'm gonna take this down no, i'm sorry I, I hit you it's okay i didn't mean it nylia's forerunner five three for five other creatures you control have trample should be Nylia's five runner. Ooh, it should be Nylia's trash runner. It is a trash runner. N Nylia's hunt master, four mana for a four three. It enters the battlefield. Target creature gets plus X, where X is your devotion to green. Ooh, Nylia's intervention. X green green. All another sorcery. Search your library for up to X land cards. Land cards. Keep that in mind, guys. It's not basic lands. That's our. I don't even have to read the second part. That's going on the list. That's Tron, boys. Yeah, like for four mana, you can search for any two Tron pieces. You can search for a Field of Ruin and a Caracas. I still don't think I'm it's just any naming good. it. Th really? Yeah, I don't think it's any good. There are cards that say land that that are not playable. Like what? There's some in standard, I believe. There's one in standard right now that searches for any land and you don't play it. Uh, Golos sees play. <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, no, he doesn't. But um, I mean, in any format where the lands are worth getting, it does. Like sure, but I I think there's other ways to do it already that you don't need this card for. Like what? You haven't named one yet. I can't think of the name. There's one with the name Nissa on it. Nissa, Nissa does it. All right, I'm gonna look up. I'm, we're gonna we're gonna search for it. Uh, search land in standard. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, so Nissa's triumph. Nissa's triumph only searches for forests. Mm. It literally searches for two forests, and if you control Nissa, it searches for three forests. No, it searches for up to three land cards. Uh, three. Oh, three lands cards. Sure, if you control a Nissa Planeswalker, that's much different than just casting this naturally. I mean, you wanted a standard one. It's a standard one. Right, but that requires work. Like, this is effortless. This is just cast your spell. Elvish Reclaimer, sack a land, search library for a land card. You could sack a land, and it becomes on a very fragile one-two. Like, I don't think these abilities are similar at all, man. No, I was only referring to Triumph. Right, but I'm not going to say, like, oh, well, if Triumph is in the format and not seeing play, like, like that means that requires you to have a Nissa on turn five and then play Triumph on turn six and get three lands that you that you want. Like, if I'm just saying, I'm not even saying this in standard. I'm just saying this card is good, like, in sets that want to be searching for lands. Like, mm -hmm. plus Nylee's Invention deals twice X damage to each creature with flying is... Flexibility is It's nice. just fine, right? Yep. Like, I mean... Also, yeah, you can actually search for one land, right? You can pay three and get to get a Dark Depths. You can get a Vesuva. Yeah. You can actually go for four mana. You can go get uh, Thespian Stage and Dark Depths with this. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sweet, dude. Nyx Harold. Harold. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control gets plus one, plus one against trample until end of turn. 
That's pretty good, actually. Trample's relevant. This seems really good. Trample, Trample's uh, pretty relevant. In no constructed formats. <laughs> Nyx Bloom. I'm going to put this on the list because everyone's fucking raving about it, but I don't understand it, to be honest with you. Do, you probably do, and you're probably going to explain it to me, right? No. Rob, tell me why this card is great. I think if you're casting this for seven mana... You can cast anything you. else, yeah. right? Like... <laughs> There's nothing you. Can, there's no point where I'm casting this for seven, and then I wipe my brow and I'm like, "Woo! -hoo -hoo! Thank goodness I can cast my bigger things now." <laughs> I mean, it's cute if you're Ali and Trazi, right? And and God, oh, you know, my boy Ali, I love him to death. And if you're casting this, and then you untap and you want to do some fucking cute memeing shenanigans, there's always cards and, like that. Though. And cast Hydroid Crassus for nine hundred, like that's cool, right? But. Also, how do you combo off of Chase. Hydrid Crassus and not Milliers? Chase. Oh, uh, that's it. I was wondering, because Ollie was like, I did it for 240, or, and I was like, wow, that's a lot. Jace or, or the uh, Thassa. I think Thassa does it, too. Which one? Doesn't the new Thassa have the ability that if... Um, have we done blue yet? Yeah, are, we did blue. Are you having a stroke right now? Did, did, I think the new Thassa has an ability it that... It does if, not. There's a card that has that ability, too. Was it Thassa's Oracle, where if your devotion is... No. Okay. Well... Okay, so anyway, Nyx Bloom Ancient. Like, the ability's strong. It's a 7-7 seven, seven trample for for a 5. I thought it was a 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, it's only a 5-5? Five, five? Ooh, that's worse. I just assumed because it's a 7 mana card. I thought it was a 7-7, seven, seven, but... Eh. It's a 5-5 five, five for 7. That's fine, I guess. It's got trample. It's also if you'd have a permanent for mana, it produces 3 times, not just uh, land. So that's, that's good, too. I think this card has... <laughs> it has applications. It has a strong ability. I don't particularly see the home in a competitive deck i see the home in a fun like mimi deck but like for seven mana dude like if you if your opponent plays this on turn seven and you don't have an answer for it you are already losing i guarantee yeah. you <clears throat> nick's born colossus this is just no <laughs> omen of the hunt three mana when it enters the battlefield you may search your library for a basic land card put it on the battlefield tapped then shuffle your library this card's great i think it's awesome because it's instant i love it as well yep. it's like nissa's not pilgrimage. Uh, what's the one from? What's the one from? Uh, Amon, I think it was Amonkhet. I don't know any. It was a three minute instant speed. I don't know. It might have been from Battle for Zendikar. The Amonkhet one. Someone tell me. The only three mana Amonkhet one is the one with the blue black back half card, but that that was a sorcery. <clears throat> Search library land. I N S T A N T. You, you misspelled it. I always misspell it. God. I'll just do I N S and select it. Uh, Grand Axe mm -hmm. equal to three. Uh, I think you just did something. Oh my God! What did I do? You altered the call the cost. Oh God! <laughs> Negative ten. How's that happen? Yeah, I scrolled before getting out of the box. Natural connection. Yeah, it was from oh, uh, yeah, it was yeah, from yeah. like Battle for Zendikar. Search your library for a land for a basic land. Put it on the battlefield. Tap then shuffle your library for three mana. I mean, this is obviously just better, right? It does the same exact thing. Uh, it can't be countered by car by like dispel. So oh. you know, net positive. Uh, and it sits on the battlefield for both Devotion and the Scry. Yeah, this card's good. Search. Oh, no. Wait. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Omen card of the Hunt. I'm just going to write that. Okay, so Fairies Band Brawler. Six mana for a 4-4. Four, four. I have to read it. It's just it's just that. It's just uh, Indric Stomp Howler. Is that what it's called? No, Affectionate Indric. Affectionate Indric. Indric Stomp Howler is a 4-4 that destroys an artifact or enchantment. For five mana. That, that guy's good. Yeah, this is affectionate Indrick, but a centaur warrior. Much scarier. Significantly less cute. Look at that knife. Or, I mean, that axe. No. That's scary. I don't want to. Plummet? Plummet's fine. Sure. Plummet's a nice card to have in a format. Relentless Pursuit. This card is fantastic. You're going to say you don't like it, huh? Not at three. That's my problem. Okay, so why? It's just one too much. It's not. Uh, a draw two for three mana is literally a uh, standard playable card, and it has been for years. It's Divination. And then it puts three cards in your graveyard okay. for escape. Okay, time out. Okay. Time out. Okay. I didn't know it said and. I thought it was an or. Oh, you thought it was three mana to draw one, like either a yes. land or a creature? I, oh, I, no. Yeah, I thought it's, it was. You put a creature in a land. Creature right. land card. It's, a, it's basically a like draw two. a salvage kind of type card. Yeah. No, no, that's that's pretty good for a green. It's deck. basically a green divination, but the fact that the other cards go into your graveyard for all yes. your escape shenanigans Relevance. is just nuts. Yep. That's, like, no, that's pretty good. Yeah, this card's real good. Didn't know that existed. <laughs> but that's okay. That's why we're doing the thing. That's why we do the thing. That's why we do the thing together. I, I can't tell you how many of these cards I didn't know existed until right now. Uh, Renata called to the hunt. Four mana for a uh, for a, 
apparently a 2-3 again. All of these guys are 2-3s when they first come into the battlefield if they're by themselves. Each creature you control enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter. See, there, an additional 1-1 one, one counter. That's where it is. Look, they did not change the templating, so that actually kind of proves that the white card who says enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter... Oh, they didn't have text space. Right. Yeah. But that's weird that you're going to fundamentally change the, 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 that, the text... Yeah. Because of a technicality like not having enough space. That's interesting to me. Because if additional is necessary um, for for the specificity of the, of the ability... it should be on everything. Then it should be on everything, yeah. right? If you can exclude it due to room, restriction, room restrictions, then you should be able to exclude it here too, right? Josh, take care, dude. Um, we're going to play some standard after this. So Josh, have a good night, buddy. Thank you so much for hanging out. I always appreciate you, my dude. And or means you can take both. Yes, because uh, you can take... So, so Mark, you can... Uh, Mark... Mark is actually not a native English speaker, which oh. you probably wouldn't know because his English is fantastic. Um, so, so it basically means you can use and, or, or, oh. in that in that context. So you can take a land and a creature, or a land or a creature, depending on what you hit or what you want. You could have a land and a creature in in the pile, and still only take a creature if you only wanted to. If you wanted like four cards in your graveyard, or if you wanted to hit delirium, you know, something like that. So it doesn't force you to take both, but you can take both. Yep. Return to nature. I mean, return to reprints. Do I write this on here? No, because it's too I, obvious, I don't, right? Uh, no, it's not even that it's obvious. I don't even think it's. I don't because of the gods. I don't, I think this card's a liability. A liability. Yeah, because it can't deal with the indestructible. Gods. But that doesn't make it a liability. You can still destroy a banishing light. You can destroy any artifact, and you can get rid of escape cards. I know. I like just... this card, it naturalize, naturalize esque cards. It's it's better than naturalize. That's my point. Yeah. And I was going to say naturalize esque cards have always been a staple in constructed formats. I'm just spoiled. This by has been an upgrade with what? Revoke existence. Sure, but like. I mean, if you're not playing white, you don't get revoke existence. No, you're right. Plus, this egg being able to like that's funny because this was printed recently, and like, what was it? When what, like a set ago? Like, wasn't this thrown? I think it was literally the last set. Right, but like, this is even better now because of escape cards. So you can exile their escape sure. cards from their graveyard. Whereas, sure. like, there was no real. I just feel bad putting this relevant in my deck application, knowing that I'm a, I can't deal with a Thassa with it. But, that's the way I look at it. Sure, but like, if you still need, but there's other things you do need to deal with. Sure. Right? Like, do you not put in creature removal because you can't deal with the Thassa? Right. You know what I mean? Like, it, that's... My point was, I don't know if I add it to the list because it just seems too obvious or, like, it's just a reprinted sideboard card. You know what I mean? Did like, you add the discard a card, draw two cards? Yes, I did, and I also added Rogue Existence, then so yeah. I think this makes the cut. Return to Natcha. I actually put Return to Nature, but you didn't catch that, did you? Rotund. Got him. Satessin Champion. Three mana for a 1-3. Okay. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a one on counter on it and draw a card. This card's so good. Is it really? Oh, this card's busted right now. This card's all over, all over. It's all over, all over. All over Twitch. It's all over, all over Twitch. It's this card's really good, man. It's all over, all over Twitch. This this card's making making archetypes. I'll put it in there. It's really good. I'm not impressed by a one three for three. That doesn't do anything when it enters. It has no enters the battlefield ability, and if I kill it before turn four, it doesn't do shit. That doesn't impress me, but you guys might know more than I do. This card's really good. All right, I believe you. I believe you. Oh yeah, the end draw card. Obviously, if this did, if this just put a one one counter on, it'd be trash. Like if you're drawing a card, and that's what makes this good. Satessin Petitioner, three mana for a two two. When it enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to your devotion to. It's a two two that gains you two at the very least. It's not bad. It's not in a modern green devotion deck. It's very good. You hit you hit this one time and it and it can just. Well, this is funny because there's the black card that's a two one for two that gains you two life, and you weren't high on that, but this is a two two for three, and you're like this is very good. Like it's so funny how the metric shit. Hold on now, that's not true. Hold on you're now. You're talking about the two one death touch. I actually like that card. I said the card was pretty good. Okay. The two one death touch for two. That that card was pretty good. Was that the one? Was that the yes, same one? Yes. No. It was a two one so. death touch for two, that that you gain two life. It hmm. was literally that card. Literally. Yes. Literally. It was that card. I don't know. This card doesn't excite me, though. Like, I feel like for life gain, this is not like... We should play with it tonight. Ooh, I'd on. rather just play Thrag Tusk. Can we just play Thrag Tusk no, instead? No, we can't. That's not on Arena. <sighs> Although that card should be... It wasn't arena. released in a Historic? Historic, I meant. My bad. Satessin Skirmisher. Two mana for a 2-1. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, it gets plus one, plus one. Nope. Training. Satessin... I'm just going to stop saying Satessin. I'm just going to name the cards after their Satessin... Uh, you know, whatever. Two mana, enchant creature, it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchant creature, it's plus one, plus zero, and trample. This card's really good. Really? Yes. 
It is. It replaces itself. Uh huh. You put it on huge threats, and it gives them trample. This card's really good. You put the you you if you untap with your dude, that's a one three. You immediately make him a four four, and you just drew two cards for two mana. This card's really good. You want me to put it on the list? You can just say just put it on the list. Put you it on the list. To, you don't have to bullshit me, man. All right, buddy. All right, my friend. Oh, that's all right. Scola Grove Dancer. Two mana for a 2-2. Whenever a land is put into your graveyard from anywhere you gain a life, put the top card of your library in your graveyard. I uh, tr I think I put like one or two of these in the Bolus of Citadel deck to manipulate the top of the library. Manipulate. <laughs> to manipulate it. <laughs> I put them on the top to manipulate them. Um, <laughs> It's just I don't think it's any good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I put I it on the deck, but... I mean, it's a very, very, uh, very narrow window of making it decent. I like this art a lot, and I wish this was greater than a common. Yeah. Like, to four mana for a 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> okay. It escapes the three counter, so for seven mana, it's a seven... It's a four mana 4-4 four, four, or a seven mana 7-7. Seven, seven. Yep. I, I think Unlimited, that's great. This card is also fine Unlimited. Uh, the problem I had was I was I was drafting a deck full of 2-2s, two and so I put this on my 2-2 two, two, and it became a 2-4. And it couldn't kill their 2-3. There are a lot of 2-3s in this limited format. That's good to know. Uh, this is 2 mana. It enters the battlefield. An enchanted creature fights up to 1 creature you don't control. And then they get a little butt. They get a little butt buffer. A little, little extra booty help? I bet this is the last green card. Damn it. Whenever enchanted land... Wolf Willow Haven. 2 mana. Enchant land. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional green. 5 mana. Sack it. Create, a, create 1 2-2 two, two green wolf. Activated only during your turn. What's that? It's a like, pretty good card. Really? Yeah, two mana ramp. On a land, you can untap. Like, there are cards that untap lands, and you tap it again. It's pretty good. It's I not mean, it's an, no fertile ground. It's not an effect that we've had in standard at two mana for a while. What? For two mana? They all cost three. I mean, we had land of War Elf. Like, no, that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. Land of War Elf taps... Okay, so if, if I play a Llanowar Elf and I have a way to... Un Shut up. Uh, <laughs> Explain it to me, Robert. Llanowar Elf is two mana with an untap. This is four mana. You don't follow? Or are you fucking with me? I will cuss until you tell me two the truth. Two mana for an untap? Yes. So what I was this saying is... four is, mana? So, for example, if you use Kiora to untap oh, a land... right, but that's you so get obscure. Four mana. Like that's not obscure. Oh, I didn't know though. I didn't know the one card that could do that was really dominating standard right now. In the like, you know, in the first two days the set's legal. Like the set's not even legal yet, man. Like the literally it came out yesterday, man. Come on, this is good, and I like it. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the list for you. Listen, if people are playing three mana, gain three life, and add two mana, they're gonna play two mana. I don't even know what that means. I have no idea what the words you just said. I don't know. Look, it's on the list. Now we're going to the gold cards, baby. Let's go. Let's gold. Acolyte of Affliction. Four mana for a 2-3. When Acolyte of Affliction enters the battlefield with the top two cards of your library in your graveyard, then you may turn a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. I like this card a lot. I don't. You're a scumbag. <laughs> this this doesn't remind you of Golgari Finebroker with a much, much easier mana cost. Yeah, and Finebroker was barely played. Finebroker was heavily played at the mm. beginning of the format. No. Before you, are you serious? Mm -mm. No, it was not. Because you had Find. Finebroker was not a card that was played a lot. I played it because I was playing a different deck that wasn't a standard powerhouse, because that's me. That's me. That's meme. I'm not sure how a 2-3 Eternal Witness for 4 mana that actually helps find something is... Yeah, I think Feinberger was played a lot more than you're than you're giving it credit for. Mm. I don't think it's any good. What about this? Don't you like? Cost too much. It's four. But it draws you like it, it gives you card selection, right? Still, like I still, in the late game, being able to get back like a, a Garrick or like a any 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 type of permanent that might. I I don't know. Like it's weird to me. Like this card seems really strong. I mm. like this a lot. Mm -mm. <laughs> I think I don't think I don't think we can do this podcast after all, man. <laughs> no, this is great for the podcast. It is actually. We'll I like just having, eventually yeah, fight. I like and having then quit. opponent. Yeah, and then I'll be like, I can't handle this shit. Fuck. I can't handle this. You can hear us like in the background because yeah. like we're walking away from the mic, but we're still yelling. Yeah. And then eventually, like it just goes dead. 
I think he, I think they left and they just kept recording. They kept, they kept, Who they uploaded arguing. this? They were yelling at each Why other. Why is it uploaded? What are the odds that they both walked away and yelled oh, at each other? Oh, speaking of which, Rob and I are, are probably going to start doing a podcast if you guys are interested. And uh, I haven't discussed it with Ali yet, but we're tempted to just call it. We're tempted to just call it freshly brewed and and re uh, revitalizing that name because it's a great name and it has a it has a brand recognition already. Absolutely. And um, so we'll see. Allure of the Unknown, five mana sorcery. I like this art, but it's Seb McKinnon, which is just actually. This card's real funny to me. It's Reveal the top six cards of your <laughs> library because six is the devil number. An opponent exiles a non-land card from among them, and you put the rest into your hand. This is five mana draw five. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that weird, though? They're getting the best card. Okay, name the one card in standard that the absolute ceiling for you, my opponent, to take. And, and, and I'm not going to hit an answer in five cards. <sighs> That's the funny part about it. Feel the top six cards of your life. It's literally draw five. An opponent exiles a non-land card. And they can cast it without them. paying it. Then you put the rest into your hand. You put five fucking cards in your hand? Yeah, isn't that weird? I had to read this twice the first time. I'm like, this is weird. Like, what's literal best case scenario for you that I'm not going to draw an answer to in five cards? I don't cards? know, man. Like, I think you're right. Like... Now, five cards? Now, grant, granted... There's no card I'm that terrified of that five cards is going to oh, outweigh it. by the way, you can hit this off of Niv-Mizzet. Because it's Rakdos. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Opponent will just take the best card. That's correct, but... But giving them for, it for free is the scary part, right? Like, unless they have a card that says you win the game... You have five cards that you just to find an answer. Like that's You could also just play a deck of like mid rangey, like good value cards where like yeah. nothing's gonna actually destroy you, like, right? You like you give them a Pelucranos. Yeah, it's a powerful card, but you in five cards you're gonna tell me you is didn't Pelucranos draw an answer. Rectos or is it I thought that was gruel. No, I'm, I'm just giving an example. You were saying sure. like play a mid range deck. No, Pelucranos is black green. So technically jund. Oh well, it's not going into their hand. That's the thing. So there's like you're never. So here's the thing. Here's a here's a magic rule for you guys. If your opponent is ever looking at your cards, at no point will one of your cards from your deck ever go into their hand. That's a zone your cards, and that's probably a lot has to do with uh, the physical nature of it. You never want to have one of your cards, your physical cards that you own, go into your opponent's hand because that's confusing, um, and it's very easy to forget that you own that card. Right, so that's why this card never goes into the hand. The card gets exiled. You guys are all t naming things that that can. You're saying it could probably kill you. Like if you could, if you could take someone's Emrakul and cast it. Right, this card is terrible because they get an extra turn. But if like They're this is the most expensive card in your deck, like okay, they'll get a creature removal spell. They'll get a discard spell of right, their own. But you like, have five cards that you. just I'm gained. agreeing like, with you. I'm telling you, yeah, these are not no, impressive. No, I know. I'm, I'm enhancing what. Like I'm, I'm emphasizing what you're saying. Like. This card, I don't really... I'm going to put on the list. I, yeah, so. and, and you know, I this this card looks really good, but five mana is a lot. I agree, but the, you're drawing five. The competition to this, though, is Escape the Wilds. It basically does almost the same thing. That's true. And you get to play an extra land. That's true. I've been playing an, uh, an Escape the Wilds deck lately. Yeah, I, I picked up two more Escape the Wilds for a playset, and I was just like, card's I sweet, guess this man. card's seeing play now. It's sweet. Yep, this card's good, too. Yeah, I like this card a lot. It's your boy or this girl. This card's real good. It doesn't look good, but man, this card I think is this really This card looks good. great. What are you, insane? I, I don't think this card looks good because you're like, okay, they get a 2-3. Mm -hmm. That's not really that threatening. It's or, the most... It's, it's, yeah, okay, it's not threatening. It's not, it's not making Pelucranoses. No. But like a 2-3 is still like the biggest creature a Planeswalker has ever made other than like Garrix. I understand that, but what I'm saying is I don't... I think you can look at this card and go, oh, it only makes a 2-3. That's I, not bad. No one's doing you that. You bounce a permanent. That's not... You know, you're not killing it. But then they exile a card from their hand too, so yes. it's not like you're so with between between uh, not thought scour. What's uh, thought thought erasure and right. between the new black discard spell? Like by the time you're casting this on five, they probably have no card. There's a chance they have no cards in hand. Also, the best part about the the two three, and I mentioned this in my article as well, is like um, whenever the creature attacks or blocks each opponent exiles, yeah. they don't have to deal damage. So if you nope. make if you have three tokens, and they attack with their three three. You can triple block it, and they mill six cards. Yeah. Like, you could just block with all your tokens every single time, and they're just going to mill for any number. Like, that adds up. Eight cards a turn, six cards a turn, whatever. That shit adds up. And if they don't have any creatures, you're just getting in there 
for with a two three every turn. You know, it's got to be a great feeling to minus three and Din Rova Horror or somebody with nothing in their hand, just straight. Oh yeah, they have no perms. And you're like, all right, get rid of your planeswalker. Yeah. yeah, that's just great. Like <laughs> that's I, awesome. I, that's awesome. I, I'm a big Ashok fan in terms of characters in the game. And yeah. I and I I think this Ashok is a great because Ashok's always so strong. There's always there's been like this is the third Ashok printed right, and they've all seen they've all seen some level of play. Is it three? Yeah, I think. Uh, three there's three mana Ashok. There's three mana well, hybrid Ashok. Planeswalker one too, but you're right though. Aren't they all? What do you mean the Planeswalker one? They're all the Planeswalker all. deck. Oh sure, but now nah, okay, so four right? Right. Unless but there's I'm, five. I'm there's I three know. three printed. I think. I think you're right. There's three in in standard legal Boosters. sets and it's been booster packs. Right. Booster. Sure. Anyway, this card seems good. Love I like it. this card a lot. Love it. God, we're still in the A's. This is the card I was talking about. I like this card a lot. Yeah, because it puts them in your graveyard. So in that in the Keith's deck, you're like, I don't care. I'm gonna if it's face up and it's a land, I need a land. I'm gonna take it because you're putting two cards in my this graveyard. This is basically a four mana Muldrifter, right? Yeah. With a with one more power. Like Menace is similar to 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 flying. Yeah. Um, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three. You're almost always gonna take the pile that has two as long as it's decent. Unless there's an answer. Like if there's two lands and you don't need lands, you'll probably just take the the hidden pile, right? Yeah. Um, separate them in a face down pile and a face up pile. Put one pile because they're gonna probably put two face up cards or one face down card. Yeah. Um, because they want you to think the face down card is so much better that they're not gonna show you, right? Or like you could put like the best card face up and then hide two yeah other cards because yeah. you're like maybe combined they're better. I don't know. This is very good for Thassa Blink. Absolutely. It's like, and I also I love the skill. Uh, inherent to to splitting piles and especially yeah. making one face down face up. There's very few great. decisions like that that you see in normal Magic. But the point is the fact that it, it exiles. Look, they look at the top, top three and make two piles. This will always draw you two cards if you want it, and the other card will always go into the graveyard. So yep. it fuels escape. It's a four mana three two that draws you two cards when it comes Has into evasion. play. Like the only downside for this card is that it's legendary. Yep. But this card seems fantastic. I love this card. I, I also love it. I love this card. I, this one? Yep. I don't like this one as much. Really? It's no Fleece Man Lion, that's for sure. Absolutely not. 3-3 three, three for 2. Watch Wolf. Bronze, ma Bronze Hide Lion gains Indestructible for 2 mana. Fleece Man Lion. Um, when Bronze Man Bronze Hands Lion dies, return to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with enchant creature you control. And white green enchant creature gains Indestructible. So, like... It's it's a it's a three three for two that gives into, that gains indestructible and then it can give its own ability to somebody else basically. I like this card. I think it's fine, but like, it also requires you to have another creature on board that's worth giving indestructible. But in a to. deck that's playing a two mana three three, you're probably playing a creature deck. You're probably following this with a three drop creature. It's not terrible with a one drop creature. I'll just kill it in response. That's the thing. I'll activate it again. I'll exile it in response to its ability. I'll blink it. It'll no, it's in the graveyard. Oh, I huh. die. It dies. The trigger goes on the stack. When it no, dies, no, no. I was responding. I was responding to make it indestructible again. <laughs> I want to put it on the list for you. Wow. 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 Oh my god, my back. Are you okay? It's been itching and I can't get it. So that's what it, I've been if you were, Mike uses his phone on stream to scratch his back. He scratches. I can't reach that far. I'm too wide. My arms are too short. Wow. That's the truth. Calix Destiny's hand. I just want to. This is a planeswalker. I just literally want to skip. Four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. Plus one, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an enchantment card from among them and put that card into your hand. Okay, so if I don't hit an enchantment... Like, it's not even an enchantment in land like most green cards yeah. are. Uh, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, okay, this has a high percentage of whiffing. Negative three, exile a creature or enchantment you don't control until target enchantment you control leaves the battlefield. So, negative three does a, a removal thing if you have an enchantment on board. That isn't, like, super fragile that they can just kill, and then they get their thing back anyway. I think this card's really good. Oh, my. I do. See, I think it's trash, <laughs> and that means it's probably unbeatable. <laughs> like. <laughs> You're going to straight thrash by this up and down the whole season? Yeah, I'm going to be like, wow, this card has been bonkers. I can't. Like, <laughs> it makes me want to buy 20 of them. Hey, if it, makes you feel, if it makes you feel better, I when we first did the set review for the last set, I said that I didn't think the wolf was any good, even with Oko. <laughs> this is the meme Mark just said. Look at this meme. It's how I feel with my English, except when you compliment it. Hold on. I'll show you guys. <laughs> oh, man. That's good stuff. 
Mark, dude, I promise you, your English is just fine. I've, I think I've I would have nev- never noticed. Yeah, I've never. I didn't know. He said yeah. it. I didn't know. That's the best compliment I've said. You don't even notice. Like, yep. it's not even like, oh, man, what's this guy saying? No, it's never been an issue. So, do you think this guy's good? Yes. Because I think there's a... Only because I think that there is a, a uh, Selesnia enchantment deck. That's probably 25 enchantments. I got to put it on the list, don't I? Yeah, you do. Jesus, God. This is so embarrassing. Bum, 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 bum. It's going to look so bad for us, and I blame you. People are going to be reading it, and they're like, God, they wrote Calyx Destiny's Hand on the list. And I'm going to be like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I put the bulk, bulk Mythic Flame. It's not a bad Tamu. It removes something. You can. It, it literally If makes... you have an enchantment, and then they just kill that enchantment and get their thing back, and you negative three your Planeswalker. So, it's so fragile. It's not. It really No, it is. It literally is. If I go turn to... Uh, I'm on the play. If I go turn to uh, put on that enchantment on my forest... And then untap turn three, play that, and exile whatever your your two your two drop or three drop was. Mm-hmm. Unless you remove my enchantment off my my forest, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't have to be a creature, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be one of your one of your ar- enchantment creatures. Well, like we already know, like enchantment removal in this format is probably gonna be it's gonna be a lot of Thank it. Thank you. All right, Snarky Zero, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Calix turns Heliod. That's true. Into an indestructible O ring. That's true. See, I told you I'm gonna feel so stupid. <laughs> Dalakos, crafter of wonders. This card's garbage. Dude, this fucking Merfolk is thick, boy. Yeah, that's a big dude. <laughs> that's Damn, a big dude. boy, he's thick, boy. That's a thick ass boy. Damn. Maybe he's normal size and his head is just tiny. Two four for three is a good rate. Yeah. Add two mana, spend this mana only to cast artifacts or activate abilities of artifacts. That's good. Equip creatures you control have flying and haste. This is not bad. There's a long history of two, or I'm sorry, three or four mana. Uh, is it colored legendary cards that are surprisingly garbage? <laughs> they, they yeah, all the abilities They're on the card are good, garbage, but they never do anything. They're garbage. I'm always like, well, add 46 mana to cast artifacts only. Garbage. And you're like, but I'll, there's nothing I want to oh, cast. Walking Ballista rotated. Like, oh, you know what we did? We forgot to put artifacts worth casting in the set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Meteor next Golem. Time. Next time, guys. Meteor Golem. Hey, I like Meteor Golem. I do too. I'm not going to put him on the list, but I do like no, this he sucks. Cards. Wow. Don't be rude. He's garbage. Devourer of Memory. Two mana for a 2 1. I want this card to be When good. one or more cards are put in your graveyard, Devourer gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and can't be blocked. So, one thing to note is if you mill 10 cards, this does not get plus 10, plus 10. Yep. It gets plus one, plus one. If you activate its ability three times, it does get plus three, plus three, because those are three separate instances of a card going into your graveyard. It's not good, though. Mm -mm. It can't be blocked, though. No, it's not good. Okay. This is real good. Yeah, Dalakos does feel out of place. Like, it's like, hey, hey, you guys, you like our enchantment set? Uh, this guy you can use to cast your artifacts, and we're like, what are what are you talking about? What artifacts? And they're, they're probably like they, they got their file, and they're like, uh, shit, we need one, we need a red, we need a red blue. You're like, oh we, shit, this we, is supposed to be in Kaladesh. We need one red blue card for the set. Do we have anything that's based on red blue? Don't do anything enchantment based. Here's a shitty card for Kaladesh. Put the, put the, art, put put the artifact guy in there. Put the artifact. Guy in there. What is he an artificer? I, this card I love. This is so good. Dream. I want to play this. Can we play this card? Does Dude, it have flash? Absolutely. No. Dude, has anyone told you? What? Blue White's back. <laughs> I know I've heard that. This is Dragon Lord Ojitai. Dream Trawler, six mana for a three five flying lifelinker. Whenever you draw a card, Dream Trawler gets plus one plus oh. So it attacks as a five. Mm, yes, because whenever it attacks, turn. you draw a card. Jesus. And you draw a card. So, so Bane Slayer. <laughs> yeah, when you go to your main phase, it's a four five. And then you attack it's a 5-5 five, five with lifelink. It's like a better Ojutai. This feels like it should be mythic, right? Yes. And then like you protect it with the, with the discard card. If you open this, even though blue white sucks in, in uh, well, it seems like it sucks in limited. Oh yeah, because Rob's got a lot of limited experience with the set right now. You still win. You just win. This card's bonkers. Yeah. I'm going to construct four of these bitches. I love it. Enigmatic Incarnation. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another enchantment. If you do, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrificed enchantment's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield and shovel your library. So it's just Neoform, except instead of a creature into a creature, it's an enchantment into a creature. It's pod. No, pod is two plus. Neoform is literally one plus. Fair. N- Why is this an enchantment? Oh, it's the beginning of your end step. You can do this every turn. Yes. 
Oh, you can sacrifice this. Another enchantment. No, right. you can't sacrifice this. Oh, this one. No. It says but you it may is every some. turn, yes. Yes, that's interesting. This card's really good. Is it really good? There's a lot of five there's a lot of powerful five drops that this can fetch. All the cavaliers. Like, there's a lot of strong five drops. But this isn't searching for that. Yes, it is. You sacrifice a four mana a four mana enchantment. What four mana enchantment though? I don't know, dude. Find one. Because you well, you jumped to five automatically, think that that led me to believe that you were talking about sacrificing itself. No. To get okay, so then why five? Why aren't there a lot of powerful six drops that you can get? It's good with the draw three black enchantment. Oh, it is good at that. Yep. Oh, now you're talking my Sultai language. Enigmatic incarnation. The problem with this is that with birthing pod, you can play four birthing pods, and then you can just play all creatures that go up the curve, right? Mm -hmm. But with this deck, you you're going to need enigmatic in in incarnation, and then you're going to need all kinds of enchantments that go up the curve, and then you also need creatures that go up the curve to coincide. So you need a three mana uh, enchantment and then you need four mana creatures. And then you need four mana enchantments. And then five mana creatures. And so, like, it's really weird. Uh, yes, one enigmatic could sacrifice the other one, right? So if you have two of these, uh, you may sacrifice another enchantment. You can sacrifice the other enigmatic. Oh, but you know what? You could sacrifice enchantment creatures to it. Can't you? Yes. yes. So if you're just if you're just going up and up the up the up the chain there. Yeah. Eutropia. Eutropia, the twice favored. Three mana for a two two. I like this card. Uh, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on a creature, and that creature gains flying. This reminds me of the land, the flip land from... Um, uh, oh, yes. Yeah, whenever they add a certain amount of uh, counters, you flip it, yeah, and, and it, it doubles gives, the power and flying. Gives flying yeah. Right. This this reminds me of that only, like, Simic easily repeatable. Yeah. Um, what do you think of this card? No uh, good, though, right? Nah, I don't think it's any good. It's unfortunate, but I think, it's, I think it is good. Gallia of the Endless Dance. 2-2 two, two for, for 2 other satyrs get plus one, plus one, and have haste. Oh, anyway, there you have haste. Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may discard a card at random if you do draw two cards. This card seems good. It seems okay. Needs satyrs to support it. I mean, even even if you don't, it's a two two. It's a two two for two with haste. Like that's already above standard for sure. for a card like this. And then like if you have, what's it? Uh, battalion. Is that what it's called? If you attack with three or more. Yeah. What's that called? That's is that, battalion. Is that yep. battalion? Um, you discard a card and draw two. Like, you net a card. That's pretty good. Right. Like, I think this card's good. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hactos, the Unscarred. This card, see, 6-1 for four. It attacks each combat if able. Of course he does. As he enters the battlefield, choose two, three, or four at random. Why does it say? I hate when it says choose. We did this in the last one too. It's not a choice. It's not a choice. Yeah. You don't get to choose something at random. You literally just get to like, you're assigned something at random. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, the word choose implies a choice. You don't get a choice here. Hakdos has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. <laughs> this card's really good. So like, if you choose four, it's got he protection. He has pr protection from two and three. No. Every other mana cost. He can only be targeted by something that costs four. He can only be blocked by something that costs four. So, again, what I was oh. trying to say... When? When you yelled at me, when, it, when we were doing the black cards, I said they put the X mana spell in the set as a counter because there's very oh, yeah. limited I, ways to deal with him. I would have never known what, what the fuck you were talking about. You can't explain this card to me. I know, it was hard. You can't explain this to me, Robert. It, it's Yeah, it's a standard version of um, the three one from legacy true name nemesis ne yeah it's basically what it That's is a standard true name nemesis it basically is the mana cost is rough so the first time the mana cost yeah the first time i read this card i read it like you did and i was like wait a minute it has protection from each other converted yes mana because cost. it's giving you the impression that these yes. are the three options so it's two and three it does it's got protection it makes me almost wonder if that was their intention and then like they just worded it incorrectly you know what i mean yeah this is achilles they're saying and you can see his heel. Yeah. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's great. That's great flavor. Yeah. That's a pretty interesting card. The fact that it swings for four is... Dude, or, ball or lightning costs three and it's a six one. Yeah. Oh, and it dies. Fuck, man. <laughs> Add one more mana in this. And, I mean, and I guess it has trample it. and haste, but still, dude. Yeah, you can't target it. Yeah, that card's cool, man. <laughs> that card's real good, man. Hero of the Nyxborn. Three mana for a two two. That also makes a one one. So there's been a lot of uh, two twos for three that make one ones in the past couple of years. 
Usually they're green or blue. Mm -hmm. uh, but this makes sense. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Hero of Nyxborn, they get plus one, plus zero. Oh. I mean, this is not a heroic ability. Like, it's heroic ability, but apparently every heroic ability, heroic in this set, is literally a plus one, plus zero. Oh. You getting tired? No, I'm good. You getting a little sleepy? No. Um, so whenever you cast a spell that targets... Yeah, so I mean, what do you think of this card? I don't... Is there an aggressive low-to-the-ground, like, red-white deck that, that's playable? If, if, if... You know what? Maybe feather still exists. Uh, kill it in response to the ability. I don't Th think you can do that. that. Doesn't work. It says as it enters the battlefield, you get no chance to respond to that. Yeah, and, and even if it was a trigger, it would have protection from everything that's not chosen, so you still wouldn't be able to target it. Well, no, because the trigger's on the stack. You kill it in response to the trigger on the stack. No, because it has a static effect. No, but you haven't chosen a, a number yet. Exactly. So it has protection from each converted mana cost. Yeah. Other well, than that's, well, you can't. You wouldn't word it like that if it was a, if it was a triggered ability. No, that's what I was saying to them. That would be one ability. As enter the battlefield, like that part would be one ability, and he wouldn't have the protection until that resolved. That's how it would be worded if it was a triggered ability. I guess that makes sense because it resolves in order. Well, I don't think the bottom resolves. The bottom is a. It static doesn't. Effect. It would be one. It would be one ability. Right. It would, it would it say would as, it would say when Hactos enters the battlefield, choose two, three, or four at random. No par no paragraph break. Same ability. It has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen ability. It wouldn't have any of that text until sure. that ability resolved. Sure. I mean, it has to be a feather. This has to be in a feather deck. That's it. Because the, you need a surplus of. Well, yeah. I'm just saying it's like it's two bodies. I mean, I, I don't think a... this is bad. This kind of makes me at least want to try Feather because Feather was very strong at some point. You still have Defiant Strike. You have... Oh! You know what that card's good with? I don't. The um... the one mana give a creature hexproof if it's an enchantment creature. Oh, it is an enchantment creature. And it gets plus two, plus two. That's not bad. That's pretty darn good. I don't know if I'm putting it on the list, but I think it's good. I actually think that might go on the list. Is it on the list, Robert? I almost think that goes on the list, but yeah, it costs three just like the Feather. Just like the, fe yeah, like it's feather. competing with feather. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put it on there. Don't put it on the list. Clo Clothit, Clothis, it's God good. of Destiny. This sucks. Four, five for three. As long as, are there five gold gods, or is it just like one gold god? Mm, there's Athreos. I know that. Oh, we just haven't gotten to uh, Orzhov yet. Sure, but we haven't seen any other. This is the first this god the first we've seen. God, there's yeah. no like, I don't no think there's, Boros no, god. There's, there's no. That's weird. No, there's not. I just randomly put one or two gods in gold there's two as long as your devotion to red yeah we know seven okay so it's a gold god with seven instead of the, the normal five for mono colored gods at the beginning of your pre-comet main phase exile a card from your graveyard if it was a land card add a red or a green otherwise gain two and it deals two damage to each opponent i like the body on a three drop but i i just don't think it's any good but it has no body that's the problem like you're it never gonna no, actually it has no body seven no, I, devotion is really hard i disagree i, I think in the, i think in those colors i think in gruel in a creature deck, I absolutely I think you can hit it, dude. What's McCall? It gives three. Uh, Cavalier gives it. It ramps you from three to five, which is not terrible. Yeah. If you have a land in your graveyard, but like, you're gonna have to play something that puts a land in your graveyard on turn one or turn two for this to actually do that. Turn card from a graveyard. So yeah, you're not in red and green. You're not really putting cards in your graveyard. And, well, you have like the cards, cards that are like Seder Wayfinder, right? Like. You hit a land, you put the rest in the graveyard, but like it's it seems like it's too it's too all or nothing where like if you don't have the cards in your graveyard, it actually doesn't do anything. Three drop that drains two every turn. <sighs> Still it's kinda But does it drain two every turn? Like Yeah, it does. You gain two life and Right, but I mean like you have to have a card in the graveyard every single turn that's not a land. Yeah. I don't know. It's not terrible, but it's and let, see, like cards like this require like a lot of work, and I, unless I can see the work being put in, unless yeah. I can see like the path to making this work, like I'm not sold on but it. But Lotus Land doesn't work, right? Because Lotus Land means I'm casting my three drop on four. If I'm utilizing mm -hmm. it to put the lands in my graveyard, I mean, I guess you could cast this on three and then play the Lotus Land. But if you don't have no, any you're way not playing to the Lotus Land on turn four then. You're playing your Lotus on four. That's what right. you have to do. So then the first trigger this is going to have is on turn five, yeah, which is much less impressive. Yeah. No, it's beginning of pre-combat main fate. Oh, yeah, you're right. So that wouldn't even work. No, that wouldn't even make sense. I, right, but you have to play your land in order to cast this, right? So, like, correct. on turn four... No, you're right. Five. No, because once you go into the pre-combat main phase... Yeah, then you'd yeah. be playing your Lotus land you'd play, to sack Yeah, you play it no, during that, not at the beginning. Right, so yeah. it's, it's turn five is, like, the earliest to be doing that. No, I, this card's no good. It just feels like it's too much work and, like... It's just the stat wordy 
god that you know like a lot of them they're just i mean not if i play enough. this on turn five or six and then i start like dousing glooming my opponent every turn like yeah i don't think sure that's fine but like starting on five or six like it's gonna happen a couple times i guess we know it hits the opponent's graveyard yeah it's not great it's not great crocs this card's great though yeah, i like this card a lot it, it's funny because you read it and you're like discard a non-land card they gain you gain three or they lose three life but you don't care you're just eating resources when Croc Center's Battlefield sacrifice it unless it escapes so the point of these guys is to have them just be sorcery speed spells yep uh, that later become big fat idiot giants like titans uh, and just like I, I wrote I wrote about this guy too in my cool stuff article and uh just like the like the cycle of Titans, Infernal Titan, Primeval Titan, Frost Titan, these have Titan in the name. They are six six, and they are all giants. So pretty interesting. Whenever Crux enters the battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card. Then each opponent who didn't discard a non land card this way loses three life. Um, I asked the question like, why doesn't it say each opponent who discards a land card loses three life? But the reason is because if this guy attacks and they have no cards in hand, then they still take three. Right. So like. If they didn't discard an on-land card, which a person with no lands would have would do, they still lose three, which is great. So it's never dead, even if they have no cards in hand. Right. I've been waiting to ask until the the elders showed up. Please, can you make a deck with these and Lazav, please? Yeah, because yeah. you could pay four mana and make a six six. Probably. Um, the other cool thing that people not everyone realizes is these cards. So especially in red black, in a Rakdos sacrifice deck, you can literally cast this in response to its trigger. You mean a sacrifice? Yeah. In response to a trigger, call it. you can sacrifice it. And still yes, get the ability, correct, right. Which is which is really good. Yeah, this card is. I mean, I don't even. It's this card kind of speaks for itself, right? Like, even if they don't have cards in hand, or if they're just discarding lands, they're still taking nine, which is very very on par with like Inferno Titan. Yeah, and uh, nature. I I know it's two mana for the ability, but two mana for the cost of the Lazav is that's all I was getting the four. Right, it's two for the Lazav, two and for then the two ability. For the ability yeah. All right. Kunaros, Hound of Athreos. That's oh, Cerberus. Uh, Cerberus. <laughs> Hate you. Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink for a 3 3 for 3. This card's great already. So good. Creature cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield, so it shuts this guy off. Yeah. As we know, Cerberus is the uh, the, the guardian of, of the gates of, of Hades, not to be confused with hell. <laughs> uh, players can't cast spells from graveyards, so it shuts off all of the escape cards. Vigilance, Menace, and Lifelink is so great. This card is awesome, dude. It's, it's a Graph Digger Hound. Oh, it's also good against the uh, the cat. It's good against a lot good against all the titan the 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 giants or whatever they were it's good with any card against that has escape on the yep t-h-e athreos it's yeah it's a graph trigger's cage on a body it's it's a great hate bear where is where is athreos i hope it's still here uh it was a buy a box right but why isn't it in the lit oh that's weird that magic didn't include it yeah kunaros uh, oh we did <laughs> mischievous chimera two two for two Flying. So it's a 2-2 flyer for 2, which is great. Yeah. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, it deals 1 damage to each opponent and scry 1. I don't like it. It's not right. Uh, I, I mean, I'm never going to underestimate a 2-2 flyer for 2 because it's just a sure. like solid rate. Sure. And this has just an extra ability where it just... If this deals 1 extra point every other turn, then you're almost looking at Scrying like... Scrying is relevant. I just think that... I don't know. It's just... I, I don't want to spend my turn 2 doing this. Or turn 3 doing... You know what I mean? I don't I, like it. I don't. I like Pelucranos Unchained. Four mana for a 6-6, six, six, which is just unbelievable. That's actually a, a really insane deal. Yeah. This card's better than the first Pelucranos. If damage would be dealt to Pelucranos while it has 1-1 one, one counter on it, prevent the damage and remove that many 1-1 one, one counters from it. Uh, for three mana, it fights another creature. So if if you have a 6-6 six, six Pelucranos and it fights a 4-4, four, four, unfortunately, you're going to end up with a 2-2 two, two Pelucranos, um, which is a little weak. No, this card was really good. So I was watching... Um... Ho Hoagland playing a Abzan deck with this, and he was in a top deck war uh, against a mono black, like a mono black Ayara deck. Uh -huh. And the guy had Castle Lockwain, and he was getting outdrawn by the Castle Lockwain. And they were both at like one was at like four life, the other was at like five life. He top deck Pelucranos, and of course they were they were like turn fifteen, so he had like twelve land in play. Yeah, he top decks Pelucranos, takes a turn, kills a creature, kills a creature. And then escapes, the next turn, he is, yeah, exactly. He killed like three more creatures, and he attacked with his three creatures on board, and he won. This card, that card's so good. Rise, yeah, I know. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. I with love you. that card. I, I, like, I didn't think I would like it. I I'm just it. looking at the different facets of the card. I'm not disagreeing yeah, yeah. with you at all. Yeah, yeah. Rise to glory, five mana. Choose one or both. Return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Return an aura card from your graveyard to the battlefield. I don't hate this card. I don't hate it. 
I don't love it. I mean, five mana does two things. It can get two creatures back. I thought it was return target enchantment card, which I think is a lot better because you can get like banishing like creature, you know, but it, the fact that it has to be an aura is rough because I don't want to be playing them. Fair. Anyways. Yeah, you're right. Siona, captain of the Pileus. This art is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Good Lord. Yeah, it looks like One, a painting. Yeah. It, well, I mean, that's how art. Well, <laughs> like something. It looks these like an image that you could see in a. In a these in aren't a, pencil drawings, Robert. In a, uh, It's colored pencils. It looks like a museum quality yes, painting is what correct. you're saying. Okay. Uh, two, two for three. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reel an aura from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. This card seems amazing. It's pretty good. I mean, a two-two for three, and it has like a, a kind of a dig through time effect for auras. Yep, it's pretty good. Uh, and then whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature, make a one-one. I think this card's really good. This is like not only uh, a great way to find an aura, but it's also an aura engine, an aura an aura engine, if you will. Mm. Yeah, I think this card is very good. I think it's doing a lot of things at a very very good rate. Captain of the police. <laughs> Slaughter Priest of Mogus. I want you to read this one. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, Slaughter Priest of Mogus gets plus two, plus zero until the end of turn. Play two mana, sacrifice another creature or an enchantment. Slaughter Priest of Mogus gains first strike until the end of turn. I figured this would be a card that you were like, oh, this card's great. It's no, a this card sucks. Really? Yeah. Why would you play this? Why Why would you play the sack when you have Woe Strider? Well, it's not because of the sack outlet. It's because like it's just a two, two for two no. that has a... a profitable ability whenever you sack a creature. I didn't think this was any good, no. Really? That's no. interesting. Maybe I just I have a bad barometer for sacrifice effects. Or like the I mean it's just too true for you. Like I you, mean it, it I you guess you play it's good. it, you kill their guy, you sack cat, uh sacrifice the you token, sacrifice the token, you get the cat back, you sack six. the cat, and then like you, you have an eight two. Right? Like I mean as long as you can get rid of their blocker, this guy gets real big real fast that's in the fair. cat combo. I, yeah, that's fair. It does. It definitely does get big real fast. If you sack three things in one turn, this is an eight-two. Yeah, you know maybe the I mean? cat deck. Mana. Maybe the cat deck becomes like a like a Judith deck. Just Plus, like, incidental damage. If you're just sacking all these cards and you have like a mayhem devil, you kill their blockers yeah. and then like you just get. Or it's in. just more points to the face. Yeah, I don't know. I get you. Like this card just seems like it's very. It, it gets out of hand really quickly, and and that's like it's not like it's a, a four mana two-two. It's a two-two for two. Like yeah, it's just a fine dude. I wish I had haste. Oh, you can fling it too. I like that. Yeah, and then you can fling it. Yeah, that's true. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it's, it's not bad. It's pretty good. Staggering. This mm, this card seems pretty ridiculous to me. I wanted it to be good. Staggering insight. It doesn't have evasion, which is the biggest problem, right? Yeah. Uh, blue and a white. Uh, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and lifelink. And whenever this creature deals combat damage, draw a card. It's kind of like a, a combination between like Unflinching Courage and oh, Curiosity love and love like card. Wings of Orzova. Like it's got this weird like the plus one, plus one, and lifelink from Wings. Uh, the buff and lifelink from unflinching courage and like the draw card from curiosity it just seems good like this card seems great it does i agree you said you wanted it to be good though i wanted this card to fill the spot of the one mana mm. the one mana i don't uh, want anything to fill that card to you know what i'm talking about curiosity right not curiosity the, the most recent one that ruled standard for is it not while. called curiosity it's what no it's not curiosity it's uh i can't remember what it's called but you the know beach I mean. one the one that gets plus one plus one the dude yep. walking on the beach yep and then you had to and then you had to attack or you oh, have to sacrifice it this fucking monster thing's cool the the wait till you see the uh wait till you see what um the animation when it gets when it gets escaped oh god oh, just... do the entire half of your screen is gone <sighs> it, it looks like a giant booty hole it looks like a giant booty hole it does Oh, my. Curious Obsession. Curious. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so when this enters the battlefield, same same deal. You sacrifice it. It costs three instead of two. So all the Titans don't have the same base casting cost. Tell me what I get when, uh, I, when I pay oh, when, three. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you gain three life. Oh, I just gain three life? No, that's not it. Oh. You also draw a card. Holy shit, that's really good. Yeah, draw three again. Draw. Okay, what if oh. I draw a land? Oh, well, then you can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Sweet lord, I'm out. Even if you don't draw a land, you can still do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's basic. I, well, I know, but I was oh. just still doing the bit where I inform you of these oh. things. Wow, that was like the when you know what? I did. I wasn't fully committed. I'm sorry. Uh so this is basically grow spiral for three mana that lets you gain three life as well, and it's also oh by the way it's attached to a six six guy that could just keep coming back out of your graveyard. Really ad, good. Ad nauseum. Really good. Is this this is Exile five? Is the other one Exile five as well? I think they're both Exile five. No, I think the other one's. Um, I thought it was six, wasn't it? I think it was six. Are we thinking of Pelucronos? Pelucronos is six. No, that's five. So maybe all the so Titans. Both are titans. Five. Well, both, there's still only two in this oh. set. This is weird because, like, usually... Some gods, some titans. 
Right. And and traditionally, there would be like uh, a Theros big set and then two Theros small sets, right? That was previously how it was done. And then like in the first set, like with Shocklands or something, you'd get four Shocklands. In the smaller set, you get three. And then in the final set, you get three. So you get all ten. But there's only going to be the one Theros set because there's no longer there's no longer blocks. Yeah. There's just one big set. So are the other gods in future sets or do we have to wait for another Theros set to come around before we ever see the other like eight of these elder giants? This like, card does interact well with Tamiyo. You're exactly right. I didn't, I never really put that together. That's really good. The card's very good. Yes. Warden of the chain four, four for three. When it, it can't, it's with trample. It can't attack or uh, it can't attack unless you control a creature with power four or greater. It can block. Not bad rate. No, it's not terrible. I mean, I don't want to sit there and do nothing. And I don't like, this is like a limited card where like, if your opponent kills your big creature, they just, you just sit there with this idiot and he's like, guys, there's already a card that does it basically the same thing, but it's just better. What? The, the three mana one that has, when it comes to the battlefield, you can either give it haste or make it a four, four. It also has hex proof on your turn. I can't oh spell. yeah. Yeah. Gruel spellbreaker. Spellbreaker. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Altar of the Pantheon. Three mana. Your devotion to each color and each combination of colors is increased by one. Uh, tap it. Add one mana of any color. If you control a god, a demigod, or a legendary enchantment, you gain a life. I think it's any good. That's fine. Good limited card here. Bronze Sword. One mana. Equipped for three. Plus two. Plus zero. Oh. Good limited card. You will card. never construct with this. Entrancing Liar. Three mana. Uh, you may choose not to untap Entrancing Liar. Tap target creature with power X or less. It doesn't untap. For as long as this remains tapped. I think there are better cards that I have definitely this ability. think that <laughs> as well. Mirror Shield. If you're dipping if you're playing a deck in, in constructed and you're dipping into colorless for your removal, Oof. you're probably in rough shape. You're doing it wrong. Mirror shield, two mana. Equipped creature gets plus O plus two and has hex proof. And whenever a creature with death touch blocks or becomes blocked, destroy that creature. So this is like a good way to get around death touch, but I really don't see death touch being that big of an issue in constructed, where we're gonna start putting in mirror shields to combat it. No. Uh, Val Valtarak, that it's it's funny because you look at the card in its face and you're like, oh, it's a six six. Oh, when I cast it, talking about Uro. Yeah. When I cast it, I get all these cool abilities. It's so good. It's not a card like Krasis where it gives you four cards in your hand. That card isn't meant to be like destructive when you cast it on three. It's meant to be so smooth. It's like exactly what your deck wanted smooth to do eggs. at that right time. That it just makes the deck smoother like the curves smoother so it's it's there i don't think it's ever going to impact like you know immediately just turn the corner but the card itself is just it's really good nick's lotus four mana this card's really good it enters the battlefield do you like this, this card's this card is broken here we go again it enters the battlefield tapped choose a color add an amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color this card is broken and in testing it is broken it is known to be broken right now I would never, ever, even right now, I wouldn't say this card should be banned. There are threads on Twitter right now about banning this card. That's so weird to me, man. Dude, this card is broken. I just feel like I'm like, okay, so cool, I have six devotion. I'm going to yeah. add six mana, but like, what am I doing with it? You cast a Kiora and then untap it and then cast uh, uh, and, and raise four runners on the same turn. You can cast, I mean. Why don't I just cast the Enraise four runners? By because itself? you don't get to draw a card when you get that. But aren't I winning? Gyora. Like, <laughs> just this winning? card is busted. I don't know, man. This is not compared to Gilded Lotus. But Gilded Lotus, I can slam on an empty board, and I didn't need to actually Fine. have three de devotion. Like, right. three devotion is like two other permanents on the board. I don't know, man. Like cards like this, like again, I have a really skewed view of devotion, where I'm like, it, like, it's I said this reliant. in my article, but it's like, it's literally the most win more mechanic ever. It's a, it's a mechanic that is based around the concept of win more, right? Where I'm like. If I'm way, way ahead, this puts me so much farther ahead. And if I'm way, way behind and I top deck this, it's just so much worse. Like, if I top deck this with nothing on board, it adds no fucking mana whatsoever. No, you're, you're right. I That's get that. terrible. I get that. But the explosive, the, the, the explosive, is, is, is explosivity Explosivity, yeah. Yeah. That's, it's, it's there. Well, I told you, we can play a deck like that if you want to. It's supposedly Shadow really Spear, one mana. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and it has trample and lifelink. Like, it's funny because you can play this on turn four, and it comes into play tapped, and your opponent's like, all right, route the god. And you're like, oh, okay, I guess I'll untap it and add nothing, I guess. I mean, that's just assuming they don't have enchantments. They obviously do. I'm just saying it's funny. Whatever. I don't really like you guys. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and it has trample and lifelink. That's actually a good deal for this. Yeah. 
Permanence your opponent's control lose hexproof and indestructible. That's actually fantastic. Card's pretty good. This card's great. Yep. I was I was also like this card seems powerful enough and mythological enough to be legendary, and it is, and I like that a lot. Yeah, this card is awesome from a flavor perspective as well. Is this what is this Elspeth's weapon? I have no idea. It says a weapon of darkness for a warrior of light. I guarantee you this is the weapon Elspeth uses to kill like Heliod or something. That's cool. Yeah, that seems gas. Heliod's a bad guy? Heliod killed Elspeth. I don't know. I don't know the lore. I should play the cards, man. And now I don't play paper ones. I play the digital ones. When so Yeah, but that's only recent, too. Mm. Elspeth wrecked Heliod with it. This is some spear that Ashok went and got from Phyrexia, according to... Oh, that sounds amazing. Oh, yeah, look. Is she holding it right there behind me? Uh, oh, I no, that's this. <laughs> That, that wow, kind of looks dude. like it. Go back. That Rob kinda, saw his own mic stand. That kind of looks like it. That's Dude, that's... Look at that. Look at the little circle. Yeah, man. It's a black long staff. Yeah, that's... That's right. That's, yeah, it's the it same is. thing. It's basically the same thing, man. Shut up. <laughs> look, they, look, there's one of these, too. Look, that's the uh, that's this thing that Ashiok's holding. Uh, when Soul Guide Lantern into Battlefield, Exile Target card from a graveyard. Okay. I don't like that I have to choose either to sacrifice this to yep. draw a card or that I actually get to exile the graveyard. Like, why don't they just reprint Relic? It's, is Relic too strong? Because they like making different options. They like giving you different things. Shittier ones. And I understand. Not everything has to be as strong as the previous options. Um, and I get that. A Thaumaturge is familiar for three mana, a 1-3 when it enters the battlefield. Scribe. <laughs> Jesus. I don't even want to finish reading you. Thundering Chariot, four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. First Strike, Trample, Haste, Crew, one... No, I'll crew zero. I'm good. Traveler's Amulet. Like this. this is a classic. You search your library for a basic land, put it in your hand. Really? I do. Why? I don't know. It's just good Good in, in it's cute. index that want artifacts. It's cute. I like this art where this this is missing a finger. Oh, the statue. Yeah, Wings of Hubris. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little joke. Hubris. Sacrifice it. Equipped creature can't be blocked this turn. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So you sacrifice the wings and the creature for that ability <laughs> yeah. at, at some point. And uh, I guess that's that's uh, it's funny because it's funny because that's you flying too close to the sun. You fly too high. Um, you get through, but then your wings break and you die. And that's actually really wow. Cool. That's kind of funny. Yeah, that's really good. Equipped creature has flying, and uh, I mean it's not terrible. It's just kite sail with an extra ability, right? Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, d yeah, it's 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 supposed to be Icarus, where you fly too close to the sun, and then your wings that are made of wax they melt and you die. Uh, Field of ruin, a little too late, a little Welcome too back. little too late, asshole. Uh, <laughs> we all know what this is. It's a great card. I'm gonna write it down because obviously, Labyrinth of Scophos. This card seems great. Um, they tried this recently with Mystifying Maze that would exile the creature and bring it back for the same mana, four mana. Um, however, the problem with that was, like, if they have a Mull Drifter, you never want to exile a Mull Drifter. If they have, like, a Thrag Tusk, you never want to do that. Uh, so this is nice because it is just literal... Removes it from combat. Maze of Ith. It li Yeah, it's literal Maze of Ith, only Maze of Ith didn't tap for mana. So it's almost in part worth the four mana difference to have, like, just a built-in removal spell on one of your lands. And also... Because th the best part about a card like this is that it forces your opponent to commit more creatures to the board. Yep. So, like, if they have one 4-4, four four, you could just send it home every turn. Once they play a second creature, which they have to to get any damage through, then you can wipe the board and you also get, uh, you know, you know some value. Uh, Maze of Ith also would untap the creature and then send it home. This one just removes them from combat. So if they attack you, you can remove their guard from combat and then still get through unblocked because of, you know, untappedness. Let me rinse them out, correct? Oh, I forgot the... La oh, I put the R on the wrong player. There we go. Oh, God, we went back too far. I'm sorry. I messed up. S-K-O-P-H-O-S. Scofos. Yeah, I think this card's good. You think this card's good, right? It's okay. In the context of standard, I think it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's not going to see Legacy play, Rob. Temple of Abandon. Obviously, the temples are good. Temples temple of Abandon, Temple, temple of Deceit, good, Temple yeah. of Enlightenment, Temple of Malice, Temple of Plenty. That completes the cycle of 10 temples in the format. Unknown Shores. Is probably me. never going to see any play whatsoever. And that's the end. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, part one and hopefully hopefully part one and two of 
of our uh, Theros Beyond Death set review. I really appreciate you guys watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Check me out on patreon.com slash franklapore, twitch.tv slash franklapore, uh, coolstuffinc.com, and manatraders.com. Manatraders is an awesome subscription service where you can get 20% off the first three months of any subscription with the link and promo code down below. Be sure to use that. It's a great way to support the stream, and it's a great way to check out new Theros cards if you want to borrow them to try out decks on Magic Online. And... Um, let us know in the comments what you think of the cards. Let us know what we got right, what we got wrong, what you agree with. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys. We'll see you later, guys. Thanks for watching.